A lot of rookies maybe uh, um, on a ball club where uh, they kind of got to get ready, you know. <laughs> they got to figure out how physical this ball game is it's in tight spaces. So um, you got to come to play, you know. And, and so hopefully we've addressed all that <clears throat> this week. Um, and they got to come out and play. One struggle of the uh, game against Salina was, was your running game, just, just to name one of, of many struggles uh, last week. Uh, what, are you, what have you guys worked on in practice to, to try and shore up the running game? You talk about blocking and, and the like, but, but what other things to shore up the running game offensively? That's, I mean, to be honest, that's the main thing. You know, it's very, very hard to run the ball when you got guys coming in on blocks. You know, and so a lot of mental preparation. We went at it hard this week, physically, but we also did a lot of mental preparation where, okay, line up defense, where were you sit, uh, sitting in that, in that uh, formation? Um, and, and walking through our receivers. If you see this look, this is the guy you block, you know. And, and so if their if they're defensive back that's covering them is, is, is 12 yards off the ball, I don't want them stock blocking 12 yards down. They've got to get a hat on the linebacker, get in the mix, and, and start pushing guys around at the point of attack so we can even get up to that second level. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, just the mental preparation, uh, hopefully it shows tonight <laughs> we're able to run the ball a little better. Well, hopefully, because Omaha is going to be a, a very good rushing uh, game team as well. Once again, speaking with head coach Irv Strobing of the Sioux City Bandits ahead of the first home regular season game against the Omaha Beef, who are 1-0 after a 59-55 to victory over Oklahoma. And uh, we just talked about, before we started recording this, 200 yards of rushing uh, for the Beef against Oklahoma. You gave up just shy of 100 against Salina. What's it going to take defensively to stop the uh, the rushing attack of Omaha from an offensive coordinator that uh, you know pretty well? Yeah, you know, he's, he's a guy that's been in this league a long time, played for us, Chuck Wright. He, he knows what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball for Omaha. And uh, so he, I think he's going to put his guys in the right position. And essentially what we need to do is, A, play more physical, um, which I, I, I think uh, we definitely can do, um, and, B, uh, play more responsibility, you know, Coach Loban has a, a gap-based defense. Guys are supposed to be uh, playing assignments every uh, every every play, and uh, you know there was some busted assignments. So, and we've worked that hard all week as well. So, you got to play your assignment, and you got to play physical. And, and I think that uh, we're able to shut these guys down a little bit. You know, tackling was was a kind of a thorn in our side last week. You know, uh, I felt like uh, again, guys don't understand that uh, you know this is small space. I, I remember a play where Kenny Maxwell chase down a, a, a running back and strip the ball and uh, you know that's a golden opportunity for us to get a turnover yet he's the only guy on the tackle um, so we got to get guys flying around on defense um, get excited to be out there and, and celebrating with their team and, and get guys around the ball so when when the ball does go on the ground good things happen you guys are 0 one to start the year which is never a, a good way to start a football season but uh, half the league has to do it so what's it going to take so that you aren't part of the uh, crew that starts the season 0-2 uh, here against the Beef. Well, I kind of talked about this last week, and it'll probably be a redundant uh, thing. And, and uh, you know, you think a lot of coaches will say, "Oh, we got to win the time of possession battle." That's not us. We want to hunt the ball as short as possible. We want to score a lot of points. Um, don't care how much the defense is out there. What we need to do is uh, eliminate turnovers and, and penalties. So if we win those two battles, um, I think we're going to be all right. And uh, last week, we we definitely lost the uh, the turnover battle. All right, perfect, Coach. Thanks for your time, and hopefully uh, we're talking about a one-on-one uh, -one start to, to the season after this game. That's the goal. Hopefully we are. All right, perfect. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thanks for having me on. That was head coach Irv Strobin of the Sioux City Bandits. Our pregame coverage continues after this. Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City. The first time you hit the ball, when you beat your personal disaster, that feeling of finally crossing the finish line. Some moments in life are pretty amazing, and so are you. We're here to cheer you on to coach you forward, to help you do your best so you can achieve any dream or goal. We believe you're worth celebrating. You're what we care about most and why we do what we do. Because people are amazing. And we're here to help keep them that way. Unity Point Health. Know how much you matter to this world. This is Firefighter Raphael Poirier, Firehouse Sub. Introducing new Firehouse Pair. Pair your favorite small sub with a signature size like an awesome I cheese, mac and cheese. Remember, the portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs, save more lives.
participating locations only. Firehouse subs will donate a minimum of $1 million to 2019 for Firehouse subs. Public Safety Foundation will donate quite one one percent every person. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMN. Welcome back inside a very loud, very raucous Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you. That's going to conclude our pregame coverage of this contest between the Sioux City Bandits and the Omaha Beef. Omaha has elected to kick to start the contest, so Sioux City will be on offense first. 15 minutes on the first quarter clock, and we are ready for Bandit Indoor Football. So glad you could join us here on 620. KMNS here in Sioux City. Ezekiel Arevalo will be back to do the kicking for Omaha. He sends a low knuckle ball kick that's going to roll right into the hands of Dorian Coward at the five yard line. Takes it up the middle of the field to the 15, and he is brought down by two beef defenders at the 20 yard line. And Sioux City will start at their own 20 yard line here on a first down and 10. Well, it'll be Corey Murphy, the Delaware State product, leading out the Bandit offense onto the turf wearing their red jerseys with white numbering and black names on the back plate. Gray trim around the white numbers with white pants and red and white socks for the Sioux City Bandits. Corey Murphy going to line up with a single back formation. Under center, sends two receivers in motion. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Bruno drops back to pass, looks to air it out down the near sideline to Andre London. And London unable to haul in the pass at the five yard line. It goes off his hands and into the seats and it'll be second down and 10 to go. The beef on defense wearing their orange pants and an orange bottom half to the jersey with black on the shoulders. Black numbering and lettering with a white trim around said numbering and lettering. It'll be second and 10 with a minute gone here in the first quarter. Ball at the band at 20 yard line. Two receivers near side will go in motion for Corey Murphy. Lines up under center, takes a snap, hands it up the middle to Macon. Todd Macon with the carry up to the 24 yard line. That's a gain of six on the play. And into beef territory, it'll bring up third down and four yards to go for the bandits. Well, as I mentioned in the pregame, Sioux City trying to work off a very tough rushing game against Salina last week. Only 30 yards on the ground against the Liberty. Starting off one rush and six yards there, and that's a good start. Here's Corey Murphy lining up in the shotgun formation, third and four from the beef, 24 yard line. They'll take the snap, hand it off to make an off tackle around the right side, and he will be knocked into the boards. They're gonna spot him at the 23 yard line. That's a gain of one, and it'll be fourth and three for the Bandits, and already Greg Connery comes out to attempt the field goal for Sioux City. So the Bandits, Coach Strobian has preached this uh, many times as his offense's goal is three or seven on every possession. Doesn't want to come up empty handed on any possession this season. This will be a 43 yard field goal attempt for Greg the Leg Connery, who's one for two on field goal attempts. Snap ball down, the kick is away, end over end, and it is straight through the uprights and stuck in the netting. It is good. The Bandits lead three to nothing with 12.35 to go in quarter number one. We'll take a break. Beef will be on offense when we come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Have you seen the crowd at the competition booth? They're just small. I know. Well, I just checked them out. You should see what they have. Cats, shirts, CD cases, mouse hats, goofies. I asked one of their reps where they got everything. Yeah. Absolute screen art. I thought they just did sports stuff. So did I. Absolute screen art, 120 West 8th Street, South Sioux City. We've got your team. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you. The Bandits had their opening possession, taking a little over two minutes off the first quarter clock and getting three points out of it with Greg, Greg Connery nailing a 43-yard field goal attempt for Sioux City. And now it'll be the Omaha offense's turn. They'll have to survive the kickoff from Greg Connery first. Back deep to return for Omaha is going to be Drew Prohaska as well as Antonio Bray. 
So Conry's ready. He will send the kickoff away, a low knuckleballing kick. It's going to roll right to Prohaska, takes it at the 7, up the middle of the field to the 15, and brought down by a couple bandits at the 19-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Beef, lining up at their own 19. So we will see. Actually, a familiar name if you uh, tuned in or came to the preseason contest for the Bandits. Emmanuel Yeager is going to be the quarterback for the Beef. He had a few snaps for the Bandits against the Stampede in that preseason contest, but uh, was unable to secure a roster spot here in Sioux City. And so he heads to the Northern Division or Northern Conference rivals, the Omaha Beef, and will be the quarterback there after Seth Sweda, a rookie, started the first game and uh, is not on the roster yet. Jaeger and the Beef working quickly. He'll take the shotgun snap, keep it himself around the left side, 20. Jukes the defender and is knocked into the boards in bandit territory at the 20-yard line. That is an 11-yard carry and good enough for the first down. So Emmanuel Jaeger takes the opening snap and will gain 11 yards on the play for the first down. That's going to be the key for the Beef offense. 202 yards of rushing against Oklahoma last week. Down in Ralston, or, or excuse me, two weeks ago, the Beef are coming off a bye week. It'll be single back formation under center comes Jaeger, sends two receivers in motion, takes the snap, hands it up up the middle. That'll be Antonio Bray with the carry to the 17 yard line. That's a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second and seven for the Beef. Into Bandit territory, go Omaha. They are at the Bandit seven yard line with 11 minutes left to go in quarter number one. Bandits leading three to nothing thanks to a field goal from the leg of Greg Connery. The Bandits will line up at the, or the Beef, excuse me, line up at the 17 yard line. Two receivers go in motion, single back formation. Jaeger hands it off left side. Bray is gonna be brought down right back at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one. Kenneth Maxwell on the stop for Sioux City to the 16. And that will bring up third and six for the Beef. So the Beef, after this contest, will have two games in a row at home down in Ralston Arena. They'll take on the Wichita Force and the Texas Revolution. And then it'll be a three-game consecutive road streak for the Beef. Ball at the 16-yard line for Omaha. Jaeger lines up at the shotgun. Two receivers go in motion. He takes the snap, drops back a step. Pressure coming. Pump fakes. Keeps it himself to the 13. He's met by Zach Slugger at the 11-yard line. That's a gain of five on the carry by Jaeger, and it brings up a tough fourth and short, knocking on the doorstep of the red zone. So a choice is made here by head coach James Kerwin and offensive coordinator Chuck Wright. It'll be fourth and one at the... Bandit 11 yard line. It looks like the Beef are going to try and go for it here. So this could be a big play here for the Bandit defense. 9.38 to go in quarter number one. Bandits lead by three. Single back formation. Jaeger lines up under center. We got a whistle and we got a timeout called on Omaha. So timeout on the Beef with 9.32 to go in quarter number one. The Bandits lead by three. We'll take a break and come back in 30 seconds to the, or excuse me, we'll be back in 60 seconds to the Tyson Event Center. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. We all know how important electricity is in our everyday lives. Going without it for even a minute can really make getting things done difficult. Turn to the professionals at Ward Electric for all of your power needs. Charlie Hacker and his team are your trusted source for your next commercial, residential, or industrial project. Charlie brings expertise and over 30 years of experience to your job site. He'll help you plan, design, and build the most effective electrical system for your home or business. Call Ward Electric and Sergeant Bluff today. 271-2600. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. 9.32 to go in quarter number one. And the Bandits lead the Beef here in the early going. Three to nothing as the Beef were forced to use a timeout to start this contest. So they will have two remaining for the rest of the first half. They're lined up on a fourth and one at the Bandit 11 yard line. This is going to be a huge play for the Bandit defense. Let's see if that uh, week of practice, after a tough defensive showing against Salina last week, 
Let's see if that practice has uh, paid off here. It'll be fourth and one for the beef. Jaeger lines up under center. He'll keep it himself on a QB sneak. I think the Bandits kept him behind. They kept him behind. It'll be a turnover on downs. I believe each team thinks they got through. And let's see what they spotted. They got to get to the 10, and I don't think they did. They did not. The Bandit offense comes onto the field, and it will be first down for Sioux City at their own 11-yard line. What a goal line. Pretty much a simulated goal line stand by the defense at the 11-yard line. And Sioux City with a great job holding Emmanuel Jaeger from the first down marker. And the Beef have yet to make the transition from defense into offense. 9.28 to go in the first quarter. Bandits lead 3 to nothing as the Beef offense finally takes their seat on the bench. The argument was made that the first down marker wasn't properly placed, I think was what the Beef coaching staff had an issue with. Nevertheless, it's first and 10 for Sioux City. Corey Murphy lines up under center, single back formation, sends two receivers in motion. He'll take the snap and hand it off on the end around to Fred Bruno. And Bruno is tripped up on the play. Gain of two to the 13. And that will bring up second and eight for the Sioux City Bandits. So Fred Bruno, the ninth year pro out of Wayne State, still making his presence known on the offense for Sioux City. Doesn't show any signs of slowing down anytime soon. It'll be second and eight for Sioux City. Ball at their own 13-yard line. Murphy takes a snap, fires a near pass to the near sideline, and the catch is made by Fred Bruno. What a play at the 19-yard line by Bruno. As Omaha's Chris Perry has a real gripe with uh, our officials for calling that a catch. And it will be third and short for the Bandits as our chain gang is having a little bit of uh, struggles here. It will be third and in inches, at least it should be on the play. And we're, our officials are gonna have to check this one. 8.25 to go in quarter number one. Bandits lead the beef three to nothing. Our and we have a ruling. Uh, we're going to have a challenge, actually. The ruling on the field was a catch, and the beef have elected to challenge this one. So the officials will go under the hood and uh, see what they can come up with. 8.25 to go in quarter number one. Bandits lead three to nothing. Right now, the result of the play is third and inches on a catch by Fred Bruno. That could change. We'll take a break and come back in 30 seconds and give you the result when we come back. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you here on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. Bandits out in front of the beef, three to nothing. The Bandits had a field goal, a 43-yard field goal by Greg Conry, and the beef turned it over on downs inches away from the Bandit red zone. And now Sioux City with the football and the ruling of a catch on the near sideline by Fred Bruno is being put under review. It was an eight yard completion from Corey Murphy to Fred Bruno and it would make it third and one instead of a third and about nine. And immediately for Omaha, Chris Perry turned to the official and said Fred did not make the catch. And so he was very adamant on the call and I think that persuaded the beef coaching staff to throw the red challenge flag. We'll see what's going on here with 8.25 to go in quarter number one. Beef trying to do everything they can to stay undefeated to start the year. 1-0 in the season so far, and our officials have come out from under the hood. White hat Randy Hagedorn will make the announcement to the Tyson Event Center. And they're going to 
to say his hands were under the football and the call will stand and so it will be third down and a little close to about a yard on the play coming up. Ball will be at the band at 20 yard line. 8.25 to go in a quarter number one. Corey Murphy will line up under center in a single back formation. Two receivers will go in motion. One set to the far side and Anthony Ibarimi. Here is Murphy sends his receivers in motion, takes the snap, hands it off left side, Todd Macon. He punches his way through for the first down yardage to the band at 23 yard line. And that is good enough for a Sioux City first down. And beg your pardon, the set receiver on the far side was Andre London. I'll make sure we got that correct. And it'll be first and 10 for the Bandits at their own 23 yard line, approaching beef territory, trying to eat a lot of time off this clock. With 7.50 to go in quarter number one and hoping to be the first team to hit pay dirt. All at the 23, Corey Murphy lines up in the shotgun. One receiver set to the far side, Nandre London. Ibarimi and Bruno near side will go in motion. Murphy sends him in motion from right to left. Takes the snap, drops back, looks to pass. Pressure coming, heaves it out downfield to Bruno. And the pass is overthrown and incomplete to Fred Bruno. He was looking for pay dirt there. Unable to get there, and it'll be second and 10 from the same line of scrimmage. Well, we're seeing a different offense for the Bandits, it seems like, than what we saw last week. A lot more attempts at the longer passes. We, we've already seen two of those already, one to Andre London and one to Fred Bruno. Here is second and 10. Murphy sends his receivers in motion. Under center, takes the snap, hands it up around the left side to Fred Bruno, and we got a dead ball foul or penalty called and I believe it will be on the Sioux City Bandits it will be we will get the call from our referee Randy Hagedorn and it is false start called on Anthony Ibarimi that's going to be a five yard penalty back to the band at 18 and it'll be second and 15 for Sioux City as they'll have to get to the beef 17 yard line to achieve a first down. Corey Murphy lines up in the shotgun and he's going to send a receiver in Andre London from the far side to the near side. He's got eight seconds on the play clock. He's barking commands at his motion receivers. Murphy sends them in motion, three seconds, gets the snap off, drops back, blitz coming, fires over the middle of the field to Bruno and the pass is overthrown and incomplete, but there is a flag once again in the backfield. And it could be potentially, it will be on the Bandits, it looks like. They're gonna check in with the beef to see what they wanna do with this penalty. So I'm expecting the line of scrimmage to be pushed back even more for the Bandits. Pretty much where they initially started this possession. 6.26 to go in quarter number one, three to nothing. Bandits out in front of the beef here in the early going of the contest. Let's get the call in a little bit. See what the penalty flag's about. And it will be hands to the face penalty on Rashad Mungro for Sioux City. And the penalty is actually going to be the client, so they're going to take the result. It'll be third and 15 for Sioux City. I think the, the beef see what the Bandits are trying to do. Doesn't matter whether it's 20 or 15, they're going to take the third down. Murphy takes the shotgun snap, drops back, steps up in the pocket, and he's sacked. The beef chomp on him at the 14-yard line. That's a loss of four on the sack. And it'll bring up fourth and 19 for Sioux City back to their own 14-yard line. Well, the Bandits started that possession with a first down, but were unable to do anything with it afterwards. And so Sioux City's going to have to try and, and kick it once again. This will be a 51-yard field goal attempt by Greg Conry. He's setting up at his own seven-yard line. Snap, ball down. The kick is away. It's tailing left, and it's going to be returned in the back of the end zone by Antonio Bray, takes it up to the 10, 15, middle of the field, and he's brought down by C.J. Jones and Blake Frank for the Bandits. They're going to mark him down on the return to the 19-yard line. 
and it'll be a media timeout. With 5.29 to go in quarter number one, it'll be Beef Football at their own 19. We'll take a break and come back in a minute. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. And back to the Titus and Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you, bringing you the play-by-play -play of the Sioux City Bandits taking on the Omaha Beef. 5.29 to go in quarter number one, and the Bandits are out in front of the Beef, three to nothing. Not a lot of offense going on here in the early going of this one. Each team has struggled offensively and have combined for a total of 35 yards of offense in this game from both teams. 20 for the Beef and 15 for Sioux City. Emmanuel Yeager lines up in the shotgun, sends two receivers in motion. He has nobody in the backfield, drops back. Heaves a deep ball downfield, and the catch is not made. Great defense on the play by Henry Livingston in the end zone, and that'll bring up second and 10 for the Beef. Boy, Henry Livingston had his back to his receiver. I believe that was Antonio Bray who was back there to make or try and make the catch. Beg your pardon, no, that's Kane Farkerson for the beef. But nevertheless, great coverage by Henry Livingston denying the end zone. And it'll be second and 10 for the beef at the 19 yard line. Jaeger's going to line up under center with a man in the backfield. Sends two receivers in motion, and will take the snap. Pitches a screen pass far side to Kareem Jones, and Jones is brought down by two or three Bandit players on the play. To the 21-yard line, it's a gain of two, and that brings up third down and eight to go. So the Beef quickly in third down as Zach Slugger and Henry Livingston were there on the play for Sioux City. 4.16 to go in quarter number one. Bandits out in front of the beef, three to nothing here in the early going on KMS as the beef line up at the 21 yard line. Yeager will line up, nobody in the backfield. Four receivers set in the shotgun, sends two in motion, takes the snap, drops back, Slugger blitzes, wraps him up, and the sack is made. The sack is made by Sioux City, Davon Bridges and Samuel Maveny with the sack in the backfield. And Omaha is going to be staring down a fourth and a long at their own 16-yard line. Boy, that play, Zach should almost get a uh, an assist for that sack if there ever was one. He forced Jaeger up in the pocket, and Mabany and Bridges cleaned up the mess for Sioux City. And now it'll be Ezekiel Aravelo for the beef. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. Fred Bruno and C.J. Jones back deep to return the kick should need be. High snap, ball down, the kick is away, and that is going to be no good. Bruno's going to take it out of the back of the end zone, up the middle of the field to the 5, far side to the 10, cuts across and is brought down. No, he's still on his feet to the 20. That's a great return by Fred Bruno. Puts the Bandits at their own 20-yard line, and it will be first and 10 for Sioux City with 3.01 to go here in the first quarter of action. So Fred Bruno with a nice return out of the back of the end zone. Sets up the Bandits pretty nicely here on offense as Corey Murphy looks to make something happen. No team has been able to find the black part of the football field in the end zone. 
Let's see if the Bandits are the first to do so here. Murphy's going to line up with a four receiver set. Coert and London are the set receivers on either end. Murphy takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to, or fakes the handoff to Bruno, keeps it himself far side to the 20, and he's brought down at the 21 yard line. That's a gain of one on the QB keeper, and it'll be second and nine for the Bandits. 2.25 to go in quarter number one. Bandits out in front of the beef by only a field goal. Our score three to nothing. A very nice crowd to show up here at the Tyson Event Center for Bandit Indoor Football. Glad to see it. It's looking pretty, pretty well full here at the Tyson. As Corey Murphy lines up under in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back a few steps, looks to pass, fires over the middle, pass is complete. Iberimi to the 10, to the 5, cuts across to the middle of the field, and he's brought down at the 3-yard line. There is a flag downfield, though, however, so result of the play is Anthony Iberimi to the 3-yard line of Omaha. And we will get the call from our official, Randy Hagedorn, with the call. And it'll be a penalty on the defense. It'll be on Omaha. And so the penalty is declined. It'll be first and goal for the Bandits at the beef three-yard line. So Anthony Ibarini with his fourth reception of the season puts the Bandits in great field position here. First and goal from the three. Sioux City will line up with a stacked backfield. Three running backs, Cowart, Macon, and Daryl Virgis takes the snap, hands it off, Macon right side, and he rolls his way. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bandits, but there is a flag in the backfield. So we'll see. Todd Macon is in the end zone, and the penalty will be declined by the Bandits. It's on Omaha. Touchdown, Sioux City, and the Bandits lead 9 to nothing over the B for the minute 38 to go in quarter number one. Todd Macon with his first rushing touchdown of the season for Sioux City, and the Bandits lead this one by two possessions. Nine to nothing our score as Greg Connery comes in to do the point after duties for Sioux City. Corey Murphy will be on the hold for the beef, or for the Bandits, I should say. Here's a snap ball down, the kick is away, and the kick is good. Our score with a minute 38 to go in the quarter is Sioux City 10 and Omaha nothing. We'll take a break and come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. KCNR Specialists is your commercial and industrial refrigeration company offering parts, sales, service, and installation services. We offer phenomenal service at a low cost without compromising quality. Our technicians are knowledgeable, trustworthy, and available 24 hours a day. Give us a call with your refrigeration needs today. 712-255-8722. That's 712-255-8722. AC&R Specialists, Sue Ann's refrigeration experts for nearly 40 years. To Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you as the Bandits are the first into the end zone. Todd Macon with his first rushing touchdown. The rookie out of Liberty University puts the Bandits up 10 to nothing with a minute 38 to go in quarter number one. Last time these two teams played off, it was a uh, Bandits thorough victory over the beef. 77-31 was the final last year when these last these two teams last faced off. Here's Conry. He'll send a high pooch kick taken on the near sideline at the five-yard line by the beef. It'll be Chris Perry taking it up to the 13, or I beg your pardon, Antonio Bray to the 13-yard line. So the beef line up from their own 13 to start their offense as Greg Connery tried to throw a bit of a quick, uh, well, a, a different style of a kick. He kicked it right to the corner, and that's a beautiful kick by Greg as he pinned it right at the five-yard line and made it tough for Antonio Bray to make a play near the boards. So a minute 05 to go in quarter number one. Bandits lead 10 to nothing as the beef out on offense. Emmanuel Yeager lines up under center and a single back, pitches it right side, and it'll be a 
stop in the backfield, Antonio Bray tripped and fell on the turf. It's a loss of two. And that brings up second and 12 for the beef at the 11. Boy, yeah, Antonio Bray just flat out lost his footing. He's complaining about the sponsorship sticker on the turf saying it was extra slippery, but that's something you gotta deal with here in indoor football. And so it will be second and 12 for the beef ball at the 11 yard line of Omaha. Jaeger lines up under center, single back, sends two receivers in motion, takes the snap, hands it off, and being brought down in the backfield for Omaha is Kane Farkasen. Devon Bridges with a big time tackle for loss. Back to the eight yard line, that's a loss of three. And Omaha is staring down a third and 15 as time will run out here in quarter number one. At the end of one 15 minute segment of play, it's Sioux City 10 and Omaha nothing. The Beef will be facing a third and 15 from their own eight yard line when we come back to the Tyson Event Center in Sioux City. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Clyde's Grill and Pub offers nightly specials, Tuesday through Friday. Tuesday is ground beef taco salad, only nine dollars. Four dollar margaritas, three dollar Mexican beer. Whiskey Wednesday, three and a half. You call it, and ten dollar prime dip and fries. Thursday is All American. Buy a burger and get a free freshly baked cookie or a six ounce beer. And don't forget, Fish Bowl Friday. Fifty one ounce aquarium margarita or Long Island iced tea fish bowl for only fifteen dollars. Five dollar flights of beer until six p.m. Also Friday, the Reuben is back. A Reuben and fries for nine dollars all day. Bring your appetite too. Welcome back inside the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. 15 minutes back on the second quarter clock as the Bandits lead the beef 10 to nothing. Some first quarter stats. Sioux City had 33 yards through the air. Uh, 12 yards on the ground to total for 55 total yards of offense. We've got a whistle and a stoppage in play. As an issue is found. We had a football thrown onto the field. We'll finish your football for the 50-50 football tosses. And not the So it will be beat football at the eight yard line on third and 15. Jaeger, lone man in the backfield, takes the shotgun snap, steps up in the pocket to his left and keeps it himself to the 10. And he is brought down by the Bandits at the 10 yard line. And it'll be Samuel Mabany on the stop for Sioux City. It's only a gain of two and that brings up fourth and 13 for the Beef at their own 10 yard line. So Ezekiel Arevalo will have to come back out for Omaha. And this time it will be a 55-yard field goal attempt for Arevalo. Here's the snap. It rolls into the back of the end zone, and this is going to be a broken play. The Beef are going to take the safety. Safety for the Beef, and Sioux City puts up two points there. And it is 12 to nothing Bandits on the beef safety. A botched snap on the field goal attempt rolled all the way to the back boards. And Sioux City leads 12 to nothing over Omaha with 14-15 to go in this first half of action. It's a media timeout, so we'll take a break and come back in a minute. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Central Bank is a proud sponsor of the Sioux City Bandits. At Central Bank, we want to help you achieve your goals and dreams through checking, loans, and much more. Visit Central Bank in downtown Sioux City or check them out on the web at centralbankfdic.com. Central Bank, a proud sponsor. One of our famous proudly with our car partnership with creative embroidery and Leroy Hansen's company. Bringing to land the area's largest in-house production of screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. Your orders will be done with the highest quality and on time. Do your one-stop shop for your team, group, or business. 
with the latest in technology, we can promise you the best quality for the best price. Wall of Fame and Leroy Hansen Company Creative Embroidery. Now located at 1501 Genus Drive. Or find us at walloffame247.com. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KM. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio and also streaming video online on Pluto TV, channel 222 for this broadcast as the Sioux City Bandits lead the Omaha Beef after a safety and it is 12 to nothing. Bandits out in front over Omaha to start out this home regular season opener, Sioux City was six and one last year here in the Tyson Event Center and are looking to have home field cooking each and every week for the rest of this regular season. So the beef will be kicking off a free kick after the safety where a botched snap rolled into the back of the end zone on a field goal attempt for the beef. And so Ezekiel Arevalo will be back deep to do the kicking and back deep to return for Sioux City will be Dorian Cowart and Fred Bruno for the Bandits trying to start the return game off strong for Sioux City. So Arevalo is back in the end zone to do the kicking. 45 seconds taken off the second quarter clock. He'll send a low knuckleball kick that's going to be taken on the far side by an up back for Sioux City. He'll take it up to the 15, still on his feet to the 11. And that is going to be Daryl Burgess on the kickoff return to the 11. And Sioux City will have 11 yards to go to the end zone. They're already towards the red zone. Boy, how about that? Daryl Burgess fielded it at midfield and took it himself up to the 11. That's a great play by Burgess, who is coming to us from the AAF. He's signed with Memphis. Of course, he's a former bandit in his own right. But he was most recently with the Memphis Express of the AAF. So Corey Murphy lines up under center in a single back formation. Two receivers go in motion. Murphy takes the snap, hands it off to Cowart. Cowart breaks a tackle in the backfield and is wrapped up and brought down by Desmond Reed at the 14-yard line. Some extracurriculars on the play as a beef player is down on the turf. We have an injury for Omaha. Result of the play is a loss of two for Sioux City at the 13, at the beef 13-yard line. And so it will be second and 12 for the Bandits with 13-19 to go in the first half. The Bandits out in front 12 to nothing. And that's Harold Willis being helped off the turf for Omaha. And he is more than likely going to have to exit this game as he's limping off of his right leg, it looks like. And so Sioux City will have a second and 12 after Dorian Cowart's first carry is a loss of two on the play. And so Sioux City lines up at the beef 13 yard line. Second and 12, Murphy lines up in the shotgun. Two receivers go in motion, takes the snap, keeps it himself up the middle to the 10, cuts to the near side of the five, and he's brought down at the four yard line. Corey Murphy with an eight yard carry will get down inside the five yard line and bring up third and three in the red zone. So the Bandits work their way inside the five and into the red zone. As it will be third and three for Sioux City. 12.40 to go in the first half. Bandits leading 12 to nothing over Omaha. So Sioux City will line up with a single back formation, Murphy. Under center, Dorian Coward in the backfield. Sends two receivers in motion, takes the snap, hands it off to Bruno, and end around to Andre London. He'll look for the corner, and he's in! Touchdown, Sioux City! Andre London in his first game back as a bandit. Puts six on the board, and the bandits are out in front. 18 to nothing over Omaha. And there was a penalty on the play. It's on Omaha, of course. It's going to be declined. 18 to nothing. Sioux City out in front. 12.20 to go in the first half. How do you like that? The rushing game for Sioux City had some work to be done, and they've got two rushing touchdowns already 
here in the contest. 18 nothing Bandits out in front. Connery in to do the point after. Try snap, ball down, kick is away, kick is good. So Greg Connery's point after try is good. He remains perfect on those kicks. Six for six, and the Bandits lead 19 to nothing over Omaha. 12.20 to go in the first half. We'll take a break and come back in 30 seconds to the Tyson Event Center in Sioux City. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, Sioux City. What's that sound? That's the sound of Hy-Vee delivering groceries to your front door. Or if picking them up at the store sounds better to you, we'll bring them right to your car. With Hy-Vee Isles Online, you can order anything from the comfort of your couch and let us do the grocery shopping for you. Sound good? You'll love the sound of this. It's free with a minimum $100 order. Take time, shop online. Try HyveeIslesOnline.com today. Welcome back inside the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. Sioux City leading the beef 19 to nothing with 12.20 to go in the first half of action. Greg Connery out to do the kickoff duties and back deep to return will be Antonio Bray for the Omaha Beef. Connery sends a low line drive kick, gonna bounce over the head of Prohaska and taken up the near side by Bray. Takes it up to the 10, 15, far side to the 20, to midfield, 20, 15, he's gone. And no, he's ruled down at the boards. What do we got? Do we have a touchdown or do we have it down? One ref called him down and the other called a touchdown. And it is going to be a touchdown for Omaha. Antonio Bray takes the kickoff return back for six. And Omaha has broken the goose egg on the scoreboard with 12-10 to go in the first half. It's 19-6. Bandits out in front of the beef. Boy, Omaha, that's one way to get your scoring going. Taking the kickoff out of the end zone and from near side to far side. So Ezekiel Arevalo. Won't come out to do the point after try. Here's the snap, ball down from Prohaska. The kick is good. Bandits lead the beef 19 to 7. 12 10 to go in the first half of action. And Sioux City trying to get their first win of the season here at home in the home regular season opener. Let's take this time to thank a few of our many fine Bandit sponsors for bringing the Bandit indoor football, like Three Rivers Transportation, Absolute Screen Art. Bootleggers, where there will be a post-game party for the Bandits. Burger King, ACNR, American Home Healthcare, Firehouse Subs, High V, CW Suter Services, Central Bank, Pizza Ranch, R.E. Scott, Security National Bank, Sioux Gateway Airport, Ward Electric Company, Unity Point Health, Wall of Fame, Ultimate Fitness, Texas Roadhouse, Thompson Electric, Sioux City Ford Lincoln, and SCE partners along with the Hard Rock. 19 to seven, Bandits lead the beef with 12-10 to go in the first half of this contest. The beef will be now on to do the kicking duties on special teams as the Bandit 19 point lead has cut its way down to 12 after that kickoff return by wide receiver Antonio Bray from Sterling College. The beef. So Arevalo is back deep to do the kicking for Omaha. And back deep to return is Dorian Cowart and Fred Bruno for the Bandits. Bruno lines up near side, Cowart far side to return this kickoff. 12 10 to go in the first half. And Arevalo will send the kick, a low line drive end over end kick is going to bounce over the boards and out of play. And it will come back out to the five yard line. And so it'll be Bandit football with a 12-point lead lined up at their own five-yard line. That's a good kick by Arevalo. Forces the Bandits now to go 45 yards down the field. And we'll see what this Bandit offense can do now that they uh, have had that rough game against the lineup out of their system. See what kind of uh, offense will continue after putting up two rushing touchdowns so far. 
Ball at the five yard line of Sioux City. Murphy lines up under center in a, a single back formation, sends two receivers in motion, takes the snap, hand, fakes the handoff, no, gives it to the left side, Daryl Burgess. And Burgess is gonna get lucky to be back to the line of scrimmage at the five, and that'll bring up second and 10 for Sioux City. So the Bandits with 11.15 to go in the first half. Lead the beef 19 to seven here in the first half of this contest. Ball spotted at their own five yard line. Murphy lines up under center, single back formation. Two receivers will go in motion in Bruno and Ibarimi. It'll be a screen pass far side, Andre London, and London is gonna be wrapped up and rolled down in the backfield. Andre London attempting a screen pass, a loss of one yard on the play. That'll bring up third down and 11 for Sioux City at their own four yard line. So the beef defense seems to be a bit more rejuvenated after that uh, kickoff return taken for a touchdown. 10.32 to go in the first half. Bandits lead by 12. As Murphy lines up in the shotgun, one yard deep in his own end zone. Sends two receivers in motion. He'll take the shotgun snap, drop back. Blitz coming, looks to pass over the middle. The pass is caught by Andre London and slammed into the boards at the 17 yard line. And that is good enough for a Bandit first down. The Bandits get a big first down there. A gain of 14 on the play. And Sioux City will be down at their own 17 with a first and 10. 10 minutes exactly left on this first half clock as the Bandits lead the beef by 12. Corey Murphy will line up under center, single back formation with Daryl Verges back there. Two receivers go in motion, they'll pitch it left to Verges. He keeps it to the 20 and he's wrapped up and forward progress will be ruled to the 21 yard line. That's a gain of four on the play, and it brings up second and six as a beef defender lost his helmet on the play. It was Desmond Reed who lost the helmet. It's a gain of four for the Bandits, and it brings up second down and six for Sioux City. So second down and six of the Bandit 21 yard line. Murphy lines up in the shotgun. Burgess, the running back of the backfield. Murphy takes the snap, drops back, looks to air it out. Deep downfield, and that pass is way overthrown of its intended target, Anthony Ibarimi. And that will bring up third down and six to go. So it is third down now, ball at the Bandit 21-yard line as the, the Bandits are not afraid to air it out so far. We've got a whistle a stoppage of play and it was from coach to Georgia so we we have a timeout it looks like of some kind looks like a timeout on the field 842 to go in the first half bandits lead the beef 19 to 7 and we'll take a break. We'll come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Are you looking for the best video production for your football team? Special events, hockey, dance, volleyball, school concerts, swing choir? These are just a few of the events we do. You name it, we shoot it. Find out more at www.rvplive.tv or by calling 389-1447. RVP Sports Production. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS says, Sioux City leading the beef 19 to seven with 8.42 to go in the first half of action. Sioux City has scored on, well, what haven't they scored on? A field goal, two rushing touchdowns, and a safety has made up uh, the four scores and the 19 points for Sioux City here in the early going. The beef just have a kickoff return for a touchdown from Antonio Bray. That's been their lone score of the contest. Offense has yet to produce any points for Omaha, but they only trailed the Bandits by 12 here in the early going as 
There's a bit of confusion right now. And we are going to have our last media timeout of the half. I don't necessarily know what the stoppage of play is for. Coach to Georgia motion for one of the officials for some reason. They have not taken a timeout away from Sioux City, but nevertheless, it'll be a media timeout for the Bandits here in quarter number two. 8.42 to go in the first half. Bandits lead the beef by 12, 19 to seven. Let's take a look at some stats for both teams as we are under a media timeout right now. Bandits have four first downs compared to the beef two. And the Bandits are 60% on third down efficiency compared to the Beef, who are 0 for 3 on third down efficiency. The Beef are 1 for 2 on fourth down tries. Sioux City in total offensive production, 72 yards compared to the Beef's 3 so far in the early going. The Beef having a tough time on offense big time. The Bandits have thrown for 45 yards and have uh, rushed for 27 to this point here in the early going. Individual stats for Omaha, Manuel Yeager is one for two with two passing yards. And he also has rushed for 13 yards on the play. Taking a look at the Bandits. Corey Murphy is four for eight for 45 yards passing. Todd Macon is, has four rushes for 13 yards and a touchdown. And Andre London with a rush for four yards and one touchdown. So that is a uh, look at the offensive production for both sides. As uh, Omaha actually is having a equipment malfunction, I'm getting told, Kwame Bell had his jersey ripped, and now that I'm seeing that, his, his shoulder pad has been sticking out this entire game, apparently. So Kwame Bell will be going to uh, number 32 once uh, they're able to fix the jersey. I think that was what the stoppage of play was for. I mean, you have officials who have to take out guys for having their shoulder pads sticking out all the time and try and get that fixed, but uh, Coach DeGeorgia was like, come on, this, this pad has been sticking out this entire game for Kwame Bell, who uh, is a defensive lineman from uh, Clarion for the beef. His experience in the IFL. 8.42 to go in the first half. I think we're ready to finally get back to action here. It'll be third and six for the Bandits at their own 21-yard line. I struggle to wonder what we're still waiting on. We have a member of the Bandit personnel in the backfield. And yeah, the, the, the clock ticking right now is kind of how we all feel right now, I think. Uh, and the, the official has not given an explanation except for when the media timeout was issued. And now the uh, clock will start. So we're ready to go back to football with 8.35 to go in the first half. A 12-point lead for the Bandits here on third and six. Murphy takes the shotgun snap. Pressure coming. He'll keep it himself across midfield and dives down to the 22-yard line. And he's got first down yardage. It'll be first down for the Bandits into beef territory. So Sioux City works their way into opposing territory at the 22 across midfield. And the Bandits are looking to increase their current 12-point lead with another one of those patented rushing touchdowns they have so far. Two of them here in the contest. Murphy lines up under center, single back formation. Receivers go in motion. He takes the snap and hands it off to Burgess. Fakes left, goes right to the 15. And he is slammed into the boards at the 15-yard line. And that's going to be a gain of about seven, and it brings up second and three for Sioux City at the B 15-yard line. So the Bandits trying to make something happen on offense. 7.33 to go in the first half, leading by 12. And this rushing attack already here in the first half looks 10 times better than it did against Salina. Could just be the beef defense, or it could have been the improvements made on the offensive end by the coaching staff. Murphy takes the snap on second and three, fakes the handoff, fires right side, and the pass is intercepted. Desmond Reed with the interception for the beef. 
And Omaha has forced the turnover deep in their own territory. And it will be a first down for the Beef at their own eight yard line. For Desmond Reed, that's his first interception of the season. And actually the first interception as a team for Omaha. They had yet to uh, force the interception so far and, and got their first right there. So off the turnover, seven minutes to go in the first half. The Bandits up in front by 12 over the Beef, 19 to seven. Omaha with a great opportunity here to try and cut into that deficit, make it a one possession game. Jaeger takes the under center snap, pitches it right side for Antonio Bray. And Bray will take it up to the 14 yard line. That's a gain of six on the play. Samuel Mabany on the stop for the Bandits. It's a gain of six and it brings up second down and four to go for the Beef. So, Omaha into this one with a 1-0 record, a 59-55 victory over Oklahoma two weeks ago. They're coming off a bye week, maybe with a little bit fresher legs than the Bandits. Jaeger lines up under center, two receivers go in motion. They'll take the snap, hand it off right side for Bray. We got a flag in the backfield as Antonio Bray fights for a hard earned three feet on the play to the 15 yard line. It'll bring up third and three, unless this penalty has anything to say about that. Flag was thrown from the backfield with our head referee, Randy Hagedorn. Let's see what his call is. It's going to be an illegal defense call on Zach Slugger, and uh, I guess it had to be an issue with the blitz that Slugger made on the play. Then again, it was a rushing play. Nevertheless, it brings up first and 10 for the beef. Ball at their own 19 yard line. Omaha is stringing together a few great offensive possessions. Here's Jaeger lining up under center, single back formation. Two receivers go in motion, takes the snap, pitches it right, and Bray is dead in the rights. Davon Bridges brings him down at the 17 yard line. It's a loss of two, and it will be second and 12 for the Beef. Davon Bridges has had a few of those tackles for loss here in the contest, making his presence felt in the backfield. That is his third total tackle and third tackle for loss for the Bandits. This one results in a loss of two. He has forced the Beef to lose eight total yards so far. So 5.20 to go in the first half. Bandits lead by 12 as the Beef line up at their own 17. With a second and 12 for the Beef. Shotgun formation for Jaeger. He takes the snap, fakes the pitch. One receiver goes, and he'll keep it himself to the 20. To the far side, midfield, brought down at the 24-yard line by C.J. Jones of the defensive secondary. That is going to be a gain of eight on the play. And it brings up third and four for the Beef right at midfield. The ball is... Firmly placed at the 25 yard line on the far hash. Coach Marlon Loban trying to make some noise and trying to get the Bandit faithful on their feet here in the Tyson Event Center. If only Coach Loban could have been the, uh, the one to make a little noise. He'd do great at that. Here's third and four, ball at midfield. Two receivers go in motion. Jaeger takes the shotgun, hands it off left side. Bray to the 15, 10, 5, high steps his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Beef. And Omaha, just like that, has cut it to a six-point game. Boy, Sioux City now only leading by a touchdown after having a 19 to nothing lead. Now only leads the Beef by six with 4.22 to go in the first half. Well, the tables have turned definitely here in the second quarter compared to the first. So Aravelo back out to do the point after duties. Only missed one two weeks ago in Oklahoma. Snap ball down, the kick is up, and the kick is right into the net and good. 19 to 14 our score. The Beef have answered a 19-0 lead from the Bandits with two consecutive touchdowns and now trail by five. 4.22 to go in the first half. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS Sioux City.
The Sioux Gateway Airport and American Airlines are proud to sponsor your Sioux City Bandits. We would like to thank Sioux City and the surrounding areas for supporting your local airport and American Airlines daily service to Chicago and Dallas-Fort Worth. Competitive fares and daily flights have proven to be a winning combination. Many customers have commented on how convenient it is to use the local airport and avoid traveling for hours by car and waiting in long lines at ticket counters or security checkpoints. Remember to fly SUX and check for some great rates the next time you make your airline reservations on American Airlines at www.aa. And it into a football is uh Fox Sports Radio 620 KM and uh 422 to go in the first half. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. The bandits lead the beef 19 to 14 after originally holding a 19 to nothing advantage over Omaha. Well, the beef have answered, and it's been Antonio Bray who has done uh, most of the answering for Omaha. He has a rushing touchdown now and a kickoff return touchdown. Bray now with six rushes for 30 yards and a rushing touchdown on the play as well. He is accountable for 12 of the 14 beef points. Aravelo has two point after attempts. So the Beat Bandits trying to head into the halftime break with potentially a two possession lead. Let's see what they can do on offense. 4.22 to go in the first half. Aravelo back to kick. Coward and Bruno back deep to return. They'll send a low line drive kick. It'll be taken by Coward right at the goal line. Takes it up middle of the field to the 15. Has room to run to the 20. Bounces off a blocker. And he's brought down by Drew Prohaska, the former Sioux City Bandit at the 20 yard line and Sioux City will have the football at their own 20. Drew Prohaska listed as a running back for Omaha. Of course the former bandit and uh, former charger in his collegiate career. Glad to see him back in Sioux City for the beef. 3.55 to go in the first half of action. The bandits trying to Put a score on the board here in, to end the first half as Corey Murphy leads his team into the huddle and now breaks the huddle. Three seconds left on the play clock and we're gonna have a timeout that has to be called. Corey Murphy had a timeout that needed to be called as the play clock was running low and the official did not signal for it to be reset. So timeout is called by the Bandits. We'll take one with them. 3.38 to go in the first half. Bandits lead by five. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenas, Sioux City. Winnebago's Casino Resort, here's 27th of April, and we're having a $270,000 win anniversary celebration. Join us every Tuesday and Thursday to win your share of up to $6,000 in cash and free play. Don't miss the grand prize finale on April 20th for your chance to win a 2019 Camaro or Colorado Tron, a trip of a lifetime, or $25,000 in cash. And party with us on April 13th with the Oak Ridge Boys. It's the 27th anniversary going on now, only at Winnebago's Casino Resort. More winners, more often. You're listening to Vantage Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. Bandits face a first and ten. Corey Murphy takes the shotgun snap, hands it to Bruno around the right side, and he's brought down on the left side, excuse me, and he's brought down at the 23-yard line. It's a gain of three, and that brings up second and seven. Daniel Versteg with you on the call here on 620 KMS. 3.20 to go in the first half. Bandits up in front of the beef by five, 19 to 14. As Sioux City will line up at their own 23 yard line, trying to score before the half after putting up 19 unanswered points and now giving up 14 unanswered to the beef. Here's Murphy, drops back in the pocket, looks to pass, pump fakes, fires over the middle and it bounces into the hands of Fred Bruno incomplete. And that will bring up third down and seven to go for Sioux City. Can't stress this enough, it would be monumental for the Bandits to head into halftime with a score. They gotta get there first, that's the thing. Especially after he gave up 14 unanswered to the beef. Two and a half to go in the first half. It's third and seven for Corey Murphy and the Bandits. Lines up in the shotgun, sends two in motion. Murphy takes the shotgun snap, drops back a few steps. Pressure coming, he keeps it himself, rolls out. Still on his feet, fires over the middle, and a pass is incomplete. Intended for Andre London on the play. 
That was a jump ball over the middle of the field and a dangerous kind of pass for Corey Murphy. Almost endangered both London and the defensive back covering him. And so that'll bring up fourth down and seven and on to kick the field goal attempt will be Greg Connery. So Connery's already with a field goal attempt so far. He's one for two with one main. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. Snap, ball down, the kick is blocked. Kick is blocked by the beef, balls in the backfield. Connery falls on it at the 11. And Omaha is going to have tremendous field position to potentially take the lead by halftime. That block was by Desmond Reed. And if you want to point to two beef players, one on offense, one on defense, that you could give players of the game to already. You got Antonio Bray offensively and scoring wise, and then Desmond Reed, who has been everywhere defensively for the beef. So now a minute 20 to go in the first half as Sioux City trying to hold on to their narrow lead here in the first half. Bandits up in front of the Beef, 19 to 14. It'll be Beef football at the Bandit 11 yard line. They can get a first down without scoring. Only one timeout left for the band, or for the Beef, I should say. Jaeger sends a man in motion and we have a whistle stoppage of play. No flags on the play. But we are going to have so there will be regular football timing is what's being called for the rest of the half. It's a 30 second timeout for the beef. 59 and a half seconds to go in the first half. Bandits lead the beef 19 to 14. Want to remind you that next week there will be no bandit football as the bandits will be on a bye week next week. But the week following, they'll be heading down to Amarillo, Texas on the 20th of April. So two Saturdays from now, that'll be the next bandit football broadcast. We urge you to join us for that one on uh, 620 Cam S. They'll be taking on the Venom at 6 o'clock down in Amarillo, Texas, two weeks from now. So no bandit football next Saturday, but there will be bandit football the following Saturday. Here is second, or excuse me, first down and 10 for Emmanuel Yeager. He'll take the under center snap, hand it off to Bray, left side to the five, jukes a defender, and he's brought down at the two. There's a flag back on the play. I believe this is going to be come back for holding. 57 seconds left in the first half of the contest and it is holding on the offense so it's going to be a 10 yard penalty on the play it'll bring up first and 20 all the way back to the band at 21 yard line that's what you needed if you're Sioux City a holding call does you wonders here in this scenario, Bandit's up by five with less than a minute to go in the first half, trying to hang on to their lead before halftime. So it's actually going to be 10 yards, I beg your pardon, from the spot of the foul, not from the original line of scrimmage. And so instead, it'll be first and 17 at the Bandit 18-yard line. So Jaeger lines up under center, single back formation. Two receivers will go in motion near side, one set, and Kareem Jones will take the snap. Pitch it right, Antonio Bray to the 15, and he's brought down by a host of bandits. Zach Slugger on the play, Kenneth Maxwell there as well, as well as Samuel Ebony. And it is going to be a timeout for the beef. And it'll be a 30 second timeout. 33 seconds left to go in the first half, we'll keep it here. And it's up in front of the Beef, 19 to 14. It'll be second down and 14 to go after this timeout. So Beef is keep reiterating, trying their hardest to score on the Bandits. And 19 unanswered given up to the Bandits in the first bit of the contest. And now the Bandits have given up 14 unanswered to the Beef here in the last bit of the contest and are trying not to give up any more as the beef will actually be starting the second half with the football as well. So you gotta take that into consideration. Stop them now and then you gotta stop them again afterwards. So 33 seconds left to go in the first half. And ball is at the Bandit 15 yard line. 
Omaha will line up there on a second and 14. Jaeger lines up under center, single back formation, two receivers in motion, takes the snap, play action, rolls out left, pressure coming, fires a pass intended for Brohaska, and it's gonna bounce and kick its way into the seats incomplete. And it will bring up third and 14 as another souvenir is issued into the Tyson Event Center seats. So third and 14 for the Beef. They have no more timeout here with 32 seconds left to go in the first half. Clock did stop on that incompletion. Bandit fans here with the Tyson trying to make a little noise. Get behind their bandits on third and 14 in their own territory. So the Beef break the huddle. They'll head to the line of scrimmage. Jaeger lines up in the shotgun. Four receivers set. Trips on the near side, and uh, beg your pardon, the trips on the far side, and the snap goes over the head of Jaeger. He drops back. He's brought down in beef territory at the 15-yard line. Ben Peaster on the stop, on the botched snap, and we've got a flag after the play. Hold everything. We've got stuff to decipher through as a Botched snap by Emmanuel Jaeger is brought down back in beef territory at the 15 with 27 seconds to go in the first half. There was a flag on the play afterwards. I think it's going to be for some extracurriculars. But we'll see. Emmanuel Jaeger took offense to the stop made by Ben Peaster and was a little upset with the Bandits' reaction on the play. We're going to have to see how this one is ruled. Because right now it is fourth down. What is, what is going to be the call here? Coach Strobin has to get in and see what the call is. And it will be. And it will be. Unsportsmanlike conduct call on Emmanuel Jaeger. It'll be half the distance to the goal, back at the 15. And so, 27 seconds to go in the first half, and they're gonna spot that football all the way back to the seven and a half yard line of the beef. Boy, how about this? If I can do some quick math here, that is going to be a fourth down and 41 yards to go. You better believe Arevalo's on to do the kicking. This is going to be a 58-yard field goal attempt. Line up at the goal line. We got a whistle before the snap. Arevalo is going to be lined up to set right at the goal line. And now our head official, Randy Hagedorn, is coming over to talk with defensive coordinator Marlon Loban about something. What kind of issue do we have right now? And looks like we got it okay. So it'll be a 58-yard field goal attempt for Ezekiel Arevalo. Bruno's back to return along with C.J. Jones. Here's the snap. Ball's down. The kick is blocked. Kick is blocked by the Bandits. And it's recovered in the end zone by Ben Peaster. Touchdown, Sioux City. Touchdown Bandits, Ben Peaster recovers the kick in the end zone. And Sioux City will have the point after try. Okay. So we do not have a touchdown. I, I beg your pardon, we do not have a touchdown. The blocked kick went off the wall before Ben Peaster recovered. So it's basically an out of bounds play. But it is spotted right at the one yard line of Omaha. 21 seconds to come in the first half. The Bandits three feet away from scoring. Stacked backfield, one receiver for Murphy. Under center, takes the snap, hands it off Macon, punches his way through, and he's stopped right at the inch yard line. We got a flag on the play as well. So some more laundry being thrown on the turf. Gonna have to break through this one once again. 
Sioux City did not score on that play. There are listed 17 seconds left in the first half. With Sioux City leading by five. And we'll see what the call is. And it's a legal defense. All right, so the clock will start on the snap as the ball will be placed as close as you can get it to the goal line. I don't know if you can really get it any closer. At the one and a half foot line, Murphy lines up under center, stacked backfield, takes the snap, hands it, fakes, no he does, hands it off to Coward, touchdown Bandits. Dorian Coward is into the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the season. And the Bandits get a much needed score before half and lead the Beef 25 to 14. That is how you do it. The Bandits had a, well, the Beef had a botched snap and then a blocked kick by Sioux City put them one yard away from the end zone. And now Greg Conry is on to do the point after try for Sioux City. Snap, ball down, kick is away, it's good. Bandits lead by 12, 26 to 14 over the Omaha Beef. With 15 and a half seconds left to go in the first half, we'll take a break and we'll come back in 30. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMNS, Sioux City. Ultimate Fitness is proud to be the official fitness center of the Sioux City Bandits. We have three great 24-hour locations in Sioux City, Sergeant Bluff and Beersburg. Ultimate Fitness offers unlimited tanning, personal training, boot camps, taekwondo, kickboxing, yoga, saunas, massage therapy, and more. Come and see why we are Siouxland's number one 24-hour fitness center. Stop in and visit our newly expanded location under Science and Nutrition off 19th and Hamilton. Check out our website at ultimatefitness24hour.com. That's ultimatefitness24hour.com. Well, a, just a circus of events that has led to the Bandits leading by 12 here to end the first half. Daniel Versteg with you on 620 KMS. 15 seconds to go in the first half of action, so we still have time for a kickoff and a kickoff return. And Antonio Bray has already proven himself dangerous on the kickoff return for Omaha. So the Bandits can't chalk up a two possession lead heading into half just yet. Greg Conry on to do the kicking. Prohaska is the up returner and Bray is the deep returner. They'll send a squib kick that's gonna bounce and roll its way perfectly into the hands of Antonio Bray. Takes it from three yards out of the end zone. Spin moves and is laid out by Todd Macon at the eight yard line. My goodness, Todd Macon came in with a full head of steam and lays out. He got Antonio Bray airborne on the stop. Marlon Lobin, the defensive coordinator, congratulates his running back on the big hit. He's got high fives and helmet slaps all the way to the bench. The 12 seconds to go in the first half. The Beef, with no timeouts, will be able to get one play as they'll be lined up at their own 10-yard line. So the Beef on offense. Emmanuel Yeager will line up in the shotgun. Three receivers set, two go in motion. He'll take the snap, drops back, looks to pass. Pressure coming, rolls out left. The pass is tipped and intercepted by Ben Peaster. Intercepted by Ben Peaster at the eight-yard line. Boy, the Bandits has shown out on defense here. Ben Peaster with the interception. Seven and a half seconds to go in the first half. That pass was tipped up in the air by Slugger and taken by Ben Peaster. That's why you do those tip drills, folks. If you are annoyed with your football coach for tip drills, look at that play right there. That is textbook as to why you do the tip drills. Ben Peaster with his first interception of the season. The second, or excuse me, yes, the second interception by Sioux City this season. And they'll line up with first and goal at the eight. We might have more points for the Bandits coming up. It'll be Murphy lining up in the shotgun. Three receivers with seven and a half seconds to go in the first half. He steps up to his center. Now we'll line up under center. Single back formation. He sends his receivers in motion. 
First and goal at the eight. Murphy drops back, three steps, looks to pass. Pressure coming. He's wrapped up, but still on his feet. Takes him himself, dives for the corner, and is... Do we have a signal? Touchdown, Bandits! Touchdown, Bandits! Corey Murphy is into the end zone for six from eight yards out in Sioux City. Leads on the play, 32 to 14. My, oh my, this is the wildest 60 or so seconds that you will see in indoor football. I guarantee you that. At the start of this last minute of play, the Bandits were only up 19 to 14. And now Sioux City has opened up an 18 point lead over the Beef. If I could explain it, I would, but I don't know if I can. Greg Connery out to do the point after duties for the Bandits who now look to lead by 19. 32 to 14 is our score. The Beef had contention that Corey actually got into the end zone, but he does. Here's a snap ball down, the kick is away. The kick is well through the uprights and good. Sioux City leads the Beef 33 to 14. And that is going to end the first half of this contest. 14 unanswered points here at the end of the, the last 60 seconds of the first half. And Sioux City leads Omaha by the score of 33 to 14. It's our halftime break, so we will come back and get you up to date on stats and scores from around champions in your football. When we come back to the Tyson Event Center in Sioux City, we'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 Canada. Oh. 
Sports trending now. Virginia, one seed, somehow advances to college basketball's national title game on Monday night, a place they've never been, but thanks to three free throws in the final seconds by Kyle Guy, he was fouled in the corner. Virginia eliminates Auburn 63-62. And Virginia 63, Auburn 62. The Cavaliers will play for their first national championship. Westwood one on the call. You can hear the booze at the end. Still upset the Auburn fans about the foul call late. What was missed was Virginia double dribbling in big court with two seconds left. That was not called. Just underway, the second national semifinal, Michigan State against Texas Tech. NBA, Brooklyn wins at Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Chicago tonight into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Vladi Divac, Sidney Moncrief, and others. I'm Steve Bissett. We are Spartans. Car and Driver Magazine every year awards their 10 best. And the best compact SUV award went to the Mazda CX-5. Again, with over a dozen competitive products in that segment, the CX-5 is considered the best. In addition, in the fifth size SUV segment, the Mazda CX-9 came out of top. CX-9, multiple year award winner. You need to check them out. You'll be impressed and pleasantly surprised since the Mazda. How can I be so sure to them? Thanks, folks. You know that feeling when you pull up to a family get-together? You grab an ice cold beer, and it picks you a plate of your favorites? Well, that's the same feeling I get at Texas Roadhouse. They're famous for their fresh hand-cut steak, all off the bone grill, made from scratch sides in a fun family-like atmosphere. In fact, they tell the folks the only difference between coming home and going out to Texas Roadhouse is they don't make you clean up and do the dishes. Come on, come join the family at Texas Roadhouse. Are you looking for a new career with a great environment, competitive pay, and excellent benefits package? Join our team at Seaboard Triumph Foods. There's plenty of room and opportunity to advance if you put in the work and the effort. Join us this Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for on-site interviews for production associates. We are located at 5555 Seaboard Triumph Parkway in Sioux City or apply at SiouxCityPork.com. Great news! Northwest Bank has a new loan special to help you achieve those items on your wish list. Take that dream vacation or get a jump start on your spring project. Northwest Bank's home equity line of credit special rate of 3.25% APR fixed for six months then variable rate thereafter, currently 3.75% APR. This rate is available for a limited time to qualified buyers. Stop in or call 1-800-678-4105 for details about credit costs and terms. Visit online at bank-northwest.com. One, two, three. All this month, Pluto TV Movies brings you a new movie at seven. Every single night. Who is this? Bag of Vans, the name. Are you kidding me? I can hardly believe it myself. <laughs> all the movies, all the stars, all month long. <laughs> Primetime premieres every night at 7 on Pluto TV Movies. He's the best player. What a grab! My goodness! <laughs> Please. Oh, that might be it! You got it! He's got a connection! Oh, Bruno comes back when I want that another way! Goodbye! Go and play that. Take you down, I'ma say that. Mine need me a couple dollars. Selling you now, this payback. Huh, so I'll say that. Ask him now, we'll say that. Up to date on these uh, the scoring summary because it is wild. Greg Conry opened up the contest with a field goal, then Todd Macon rushed for three yards for the touchdown. That was 10 to nothing in Sioux City. Then an Omaha safety made it 12 nothing. Another rushing touchdown by the Bandits for Andre London made it 19 to nothing. Then the beef promptly answered with an Antonio Bray kickoff return that went the length of the football field for six and. 
made it 19 to seven. Then Antonio Bray rushed uh, half the length of the football field, 25 yards for another touchdown, made it 19 to 14 at that point in the contest. And it was Dorian Coward who rushed for a yard, made it 25 to 14 with 15 seconds left in the contest. And then as time expired, Corey Murphy rushed for eight yards and made it 33 to 14 in favor of Sioux City. For the Bandits, they uh, with total offense, 98 yards of total offense, 53 yards on the ground, 45 through the air. And for the Beef, total offense of 26 yards, 24 on the ground, two through the air. They have 81 yards on kickoff returns compared to the Bandits, 51. On third downs, Sioux City is 57% on four of seven on third down conversions. For the Beef, they are one of five on third down conversions and one of two on fourth down conversions. The Bandits have scored every single time they've been in the red zone. They're four for four compared to the Beef, who are 0 for two. Let's take a look at some individual stats. First for the Beef, Emmanuel Yeager is one for two with two yards passing. Then on the ground is Antonio Bray, eight rushes, 36 yards, and a touchdown. And Emmanuel Yeager, six rushes for 21 yards. And uh, that gets canceled out by a few long rushing loss plays that have netted a loss of 33 yards total for the Beef. In receiving, Kareem Jones, the only one to haul in a pass. He has a catch for two yards. Zeke Arevalo, two for two on extra point attempts and 0 for two on field goals. He's attempted some really long field goals. I believe both of those attempts are 50 plus yards. On uh, kickoff returns, Antonio Bray, three returns, 69 yards and a touchdown. Desmond Reed with an interception for the beef and leading tackler for Omaha is Chris Perry. He has five solo, and then it is Harold Willis and Desmond Reed who each have four. A half a sack for Kwame Bell, half a sack for Harold Willis, and a combined three tackles for loss for the beef so far with, of course, that one interception that I mentioned. Let's take a look at Sioux City's individual stats. Here in the first half of action, Corey Murphy is four for 11, 45 yards passing and an interception thrown. And on the ground, Corey Murphy, five rushes for 21 yards. He has a touchdown on the ground. Daryl Burgess, the former Memphis Express player and also former bandit, three rushes for 11 yards on the ground. And then it is Todd Bacon with four carries for 13 yards and a touchdown. Dorian Cowart has two rushes for negative one yard, but has a touchdown as well. And Andre London with a rush for four yards and a touchdown for him. Uh, in the air, Andre London, two catches for 12 yards. And Anthony Farini with a catch for 26 yards. And Greg Bruno, a catch for seven yards. Greg Conry is four for four in point after try. One for three on field goal attempts so far. On kickoff returns, Dorian Cowart, two returns for 35 yards. And Daryl Burgess with a return for 16. Yards. Ben Peaster, the lone interception for Sioux City. He took it back one yard off the tip from Zach Slugger and uh, set up the bandits to put up 14 consecutive points with a minute left in the first half. Defensive lead for Sioux City. Lead away the tackles is Kenneth Maxwell. He has five. Avon Bridges, how about him? Three tackles for loss for Sioux City. of games so far for the Bandits. Got to finish it out now. They're leading by 19 over the Beef. And want to remind you, the next Bandit football broadcast will be from Amarillo, Texas. As the Beef will be taking on the Venom in that contest two weeks from now. Sioux City will be heading down to Amarillo. That's a 6 o'clock kickoff on the 20th of April, the uh, April 4 Eastern. I do believe if I got that right. So that is what's coming up in home game for Sioux City will be when they have to rematch the Salina Liberty on the 27th of April. They'll be back to back home then. They'll be at Oklahoma, home against Amarillo at Salina and back to back home games to start in June against Wichita and Texas and back to back roads against Oklahoma and at Omaha. Let's uh, take a look at
and some scores as well from around the rest of the CIF. There are two other games going on in Champions Indoor Football. Texas and Salina, the Revolution and the Liberty are tied at 34 apiece with 7.49 to go in the third quarter of that contest. And as of right now, don't have a score from the Oklahoma and Wichita game. That's, uh, well, has Northern Conference implications there. Let's see if we can get you a score, because we would love to keep you as up to date on the CIF as we can. Flying Aces going on against Wichita. Don't have a score as of right now in that one. Once we do, oh, well, we do. Oklahoma is leading Wichita 20 to 13 at the half. 20 to 13, the Flying Aces leading the force who have uh, had a rough start to the contest. That was actually a 10 to nothing lead in favor of Wichita in the first quarter, but uh, the rest of the season has been. Bandits lead by 19 over the Beef after putting up to start the contest, 19 unanswered. The Beef answered with 14 unanswered. And then the Bandits answered with 14 unanswered in the last minute of the first half. So a back and forth contest so far. Let's take another break and when we come back, we will get you for sure ready for the second half of action here in the Tyson Event Center. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. This is firefighter Raphael Poirier from Firehouse Subs. Introducing new Firehouse Pairs. Pair your favorite small sub with a signature side, like the awesome five cheese mac and cheese. And remember, a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders. Firehouse Subs, enjoy more subs, save more lives. Participating locations only, Firehouse Subs is donating a minimum of $1 million in 2019 to Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation by donating 0.11% of every purchase. Have you seen the crowd at the conference booth? They're just smart. I know. Well, I just checked them out. You should see what they have. Hats, shirts, TV cases, mouse pads, goosies. I asked one of their reps when they got everything. Yeah. Absolute screen art. I thought they just did sports stuff. So did I. But he said that screen art does everything for winning business teams and does for winning sports teams. My God, what are we going to do with all these? Absolute Sweetheart, 120 West 8th Street, South Sioux City. We've got your game. We all know how important electricity is in our everyday lives. Going without it for even a minute can really make getting things done difficult. Turn to the professionals at Ward Electric for all of your power needs. Charlie Hacker and his team are your trusted source for your next commercial, residential, or industrial project. Charlie brings expertise and over 30 years of experience to your job site. He'll help you plan, design, and build the most effective electrical system for your home or business. Call Ward Electric and Sergeant Bluff today. 271-2600. Three Rivers Transportation, your truckload carrier, is a full-service transportation intermediary for over-the-road shipping. Three Rivers since 1977 will give you confidence that your shipment will arrive safely, on time, and at a competitive rate. Three Rivers Transportation wants to wish the Sioux City Bandits the best of luck throughout the football season with the hopes of another championship. See GetYourLoadsCovered.com for all Three Rivers Transportation information. It's tax season again. All of a sudden, tax professionals start popping up all over the place. You do the smart thing. R.E. Scott is your true professional with expertise and technology to navigate complex tax law. R.E. Scott has served the Zuland area for decades and have proven their worth with accounting and tax preparation. This year, choose R.E. Scott, the true professional that will be here every day of the year. Offices on 9th and Grandview at 252-2216 or Transit Avenue at 274-7451. R.E. Scott, experts working for you. From time to time, you just want something different, like a new car or a new car buying experience. Experience the Sioux City Ford Lincoln difference. Like the lowest price, clearly marked on every vehicle, our friendly, non-commissioned staff make it possible. We put you first, making auto buying a relaxed and enjoyable experience. We are a team of people who understand the value of being a good community partner by giving back to the community we serve. Come into Sioux City Ford Lincoln and experience the difference. Or visit us online at SiouxCityFord.com. ACNR Special this is your commercial and industrial refrigeration company offering parts, sales, service, and installation services. We offer phenomenal service at a low cost without compromising quality. Our technicians are knowledgeable, trustworthy, and available 24 hours a day. Give us a call with your refrigeration needs today. 
712-255-8722. That's 712-255-8722. AC&R Specialist, Sue Ann's refrigeration experts for nearly 40 years. Klein's Grill and Pub offers nightly specials Tuesday to Friday. Tuesday's ground beef taco salad for only $9. $4 margarita for $3 Mexican beer. Whiskey Wednesday free. If you call it, $10 prime tip and fries. Thursday's All American buy a burger and get a free freshly baked cookie or a six ounce beer. And don't forget it, Fish Bowl Friday. Get a 51 ounce aquarium margarita or long down a nice tea fish bowl for only $15. The $5 flights of beer until 6 p.m. Also Friday, the Ruben is back. A Ruben and fries for nine. $9 all day. Bring your appetite too. Fox Sports trending now. Virginia, one seed, somehow advances to college basketball's national title game on Monday night, a place they've never been, but thanks to three free throws in the final seconds by Kyle Guy, he was fouled in the corner. Virginia eliminates Auburn 63 62. And Virginia! 63 over 62. The Cavaliers will play for their first national championship. Westwood won on the call. You can hear the booze at the end. Still upset the Auburn fans about the foul call late. What was missed was Virginia double dribbling in midcourt with two seconds left. That was not called. Just underway, the second national semifinal, Michigan State against Texas Tech. NBA, Brooklyn wins in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Chicago tonight into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Vladi Diva, Sidney Moncrief, and others, I seem to say. We are Central Bank is a proud sponsor of the Sioux City Bandits. At Central Bank, we want to help you achieve your goals and dreams through checking, loans, and much more. Visit Central Bank in downtown Sioux City or check them out on the web at centralbankfdic.com. Central Bank, a proud sponsor of the Sioux City Bandits and proud to make your dreams come true. Central Bank, member FDIC. World of Fame is proud to announce our partnership with Creative Embroidery and Leroy Hansen Company. Bringing Siouxland the area's largest in-house production in screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. Your orders will be done with the highest quality and on time. We're your one-stop shop for your team, group, or business. With the latest in technology, we can promise you the best quality for the best price. Wall of Fame and Leroy Hansen Company Creative Embroidery. Now located at 1501 Venus Drive. Or find us at wallofame247.com. What's that sound? That's the sound of Hy-Vee delivering groceries to your front door. Or, if picking them up at the store sounds better to you, we'll bring them right to your car. With Hy-Vee Isles Online, you can order anything from the comfort of your couch. And let us do the grocery shopping for you. Sound good? Then you'll love the sound of this. It's free with a minimum $100 order. Save time, shop online. Try HyVeeIslesOnline.com today. Are you looking for the best video production for your football team? Special events, hockey, dance, volleyball, school concerts, swing choir? These are just a few of the events we do. You name it, we shoot it. Find out more at www.rbplive.tv or by calling 389-1447. RBP Sports Production. The Sioux Gateway Airport and American Airlines are proud to sponsor your Sioux City Bandits. We would like to thank Sioux City and the surrounding areas for supporting your local airport and American Airlines daily service to Chicago and Dallas-Fort Worth. Competitive fares and daily flights have proven to be a winning combination. Many customers have commented on how convenient it is to use the local airport and avoid traveling for hours by car and waiting in long lines at ticket counters or security checkpoints. Remember to fly SUX and check for some great rates the next time you make your airline reservations on American Airlines at www.aa.com. Winnipeg's Casino Resort turns 27th in April, and we're having a $270,000 win-aversary celebration. Join us every Tuesday and Thursday to win your share of up to 6000 in cash and free play. Don't miss the grand prize finale on April 20th for your chance to win a 2019 Camaro or Colorado truck, a trip of a lifetime, or $25,000 in cash. And party with us on April 13th with the Oak Ridge Boys. It's the 27th anniversary going on now only at Winnipeg's Casino Resort. More winners, more often. Welcome back inside the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS, also on iHeartRadio and streaming video live 
on Pluto TV. The Sioux City Bandits lead the Omaha Beef 33 to 14 as we get ready for the second half of action in this contest. I want to take a look at the standings across the CIF, get you up to date on those. Right now, the leader of the Northern Conference is the team Sioux City is playing currently. Omaha is 1-0 in the season with that victory over Oklahoma. They lead the Northern Conference over Salina, who is one and one. Sioux City falls into the third spot at 0 and one, and Wichita rounds out the Northern Conference at 0 and two. So overall, the conference is two and four this year, and the Southern Conference has done a whole lot better. Duke City leading the South Conference two and zero. Texas is one and zero, trying to stay undefeated as they're taking on Salina tonight. Amarillo is one and one, and Oklahoma is zero and one to start their uh, team's career in the Champions Indoor Football. Update of scores: Salina leading in Texas now, 40 to 34, with 4:53 to go in the third quarter down at the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. So, ready to start the second half of action here at the Tyson Event Center. It'll be the Beef who will start things off on offense for Omaha as uh, they elected to kick to start off the contest. So for the Bandits to get those two touchdowns were obviously big. They wanted to at least hold the uh, Beef to a deficit heading into the halftime break, and the Bandits were able to do that and add to it tenfold. So they now lead 33 to 14. Gotta say, it's a great atmosphere here at the Tyson Event Center. Two weeks ago was the preseason game. It was a great atmosphere then, and it's ramped up here in the regular season when this these games actually now count for each team. Bandits are 0-1, Beef are 1-0. Bandits trying to pick up their first win of the season and uh, try not to get the kiss of death almost to start the year at 0-2. Coach Strobe and Sen, they uh, obviously don't want to start 0-2. No, he says almost, and I almost quote exactly, no championship team starts 0-2. So there you go. They, it's how you build off the 0 and, or 1 and 0, I should say, or 0 and 1, excuse me, that uh, makes a championship team. So 15 minutes on the third quarter clock. Beef will be returning the kickoff from Sioux City once we are ready to go here in the second half of this one. And it's once again leading the Beef by 19, 33 to 14 over Omaha. 19 points for the Bandits, 14 for the Beef, and then 19 for the Bandits. That's how this has gone. It hasn't really been back, and, it's been back and forth, but it, not in the sense of Sioux City scores, Omaha scores, and, and like that. It's been, each team's had their own run. So uh, if things shape out normally, this is now Omaha's turn for a run. Let's see if the, the Bandits don't even allow that to happen. Let's, uh, hopefully the Bandit defense step up and not allow a run. So 15 minutes once again on the third quarter clock. Sioux City ready to get going over Omaha 33 to 14 and ready to start the second half of this contest. Back deep to return for Omaha is Antonio Bray and Greg Connery out there to do the kicking. He sends a line drive end over end kick that's gonna bounce right at the goal line into the hands of Antonio Bray at the five. Takes it up near side to the 10, breaks through the defense to the 20 and he's brought down in open space at the 22 yard line by Dorian Cowart. That's a great kickoff return again by Antonio Bray. Proving dangerous once again on kickoff return duties and Omaha will start at their own 22 yard line right by midfield. So Antonio Bray just must have incredible vision when it comes to returning kickoffs because he knows how to slice and dice the Sioux City return defense with incredible ease. It's first and 10 for Omaha. Ball is at their own 22-yard line as Emmanuel Yeager lines up in the shotgun. Two receivers go in motion. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Slugger read the play well as Murphy cuts it, or Yeager, excuse me, cuts it back near side across midfield to the 21. That is a gain of about six yards for Jaeger, and it brings up second and four. 
And also, they're now in bandit territory at the 21-yard line. So Emmanuel Yeager took a broken play and got six yards out of it. Here's second and four for the beef. And the shotgun is Yeager. He sends two receivers in motion, takes the snap, and this time he hands it off to Bray up the middle of the 15. Breaks the tackle to the 10, the 5. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, beef. Antonio Bray with his third all-purpose touchdown of the contest, second rushing, first, or one returning. And Omaha answers the call right out of the get-go with a touchdown, 13-37 to go in quarter number three. And the Bandits' lead is 13-33 to 20 over the beef. So now Ezekiel Arevalo back in to do the point after duties with Prohaska to hold the former bandit. Here is the snap. It's bobbled by Prohaska. He'll keep it himself around the left side to the five. Spin move dives for the two-point conversion, and he's in. A broken play on a botched snap on the point after try, and Prohaska turns it into two points as Omaha has cut it to an 11-point game. It's 33-22. to 22. Bandits out in front with 13.37 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break. It'll be Bandit football when we come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenas, Sioux City. Ultimate Fitness is proud to be the official fitness center of the Sioux City Bandits. We have three great 24-hour locations in Sioux City, Sergeant Bluff and Beersburg. Ultimate Fitness offers unlimited tanning, personal training, boot camps, taekwondo, kickboxing, yoga, saunas, massage therapy, and more. Come and see why we are Siouxland's number one 24-hour fitness center. Stop in and visit our newly expanded location under Science and Nutrition off 19th and Hamilton. Check out our website at ultimatefitness24hour.com. That's ultimatefitness24hour.com. Bandit Indoor Football is on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on 620 KMNS and iHeartRadio and video streaming on Pluto TV. As the Sioux City Bandits lead the Omaha Beef 33 to 22 here in this home regular season opener for the Bandits. It was Antonio Bray who just Rushed it in for the touchdown. It's his third all-purpose touchdown for the Beef. He has been on fire for Omaha, scoring the football. And now we'll see if the Beef defense can continue what their offense has just done. They'll send a low line drive knuckleball kick that's going to bounce to the boards and taken by Cowart to the 15-20. Far side to the 25, still on his feet. And he's finally tripped up in Beef territory at the 24-yard line by Drew Prohaska. Prohaska on the stop across midfield. And the Bandits will line up in beef territory at the 24-yard line with 13.20 to go in quarter number three. So Sioux City's return by Cowart. That's a great play by Dorian Cowart. He had to catch it at the boards and keep it from going into the seats where uh, some fans were looking to get another souvenir. And Cowart turned what would have been a first and 10 from inside the 10 to a first and 10 at the beef 24. Murphy lines up under center. Two receivers go from the far side, near side in motion. They'll pitch it left side, Todd Macon, and Macon is wrapped up, brought down at the 20-yard line. That's a gain of four on the play for Macon. It's brought down on the play, I believe, at the boards. Yeah, they're gonna mark him down at the 20-yard line. So that'll be second down and six to go for Sioux City. Ball at the Beef 20-yard line. Murphy will line up once again under center. One receiver set far side, and Andre London, two go in motion. They'll take the snap. They'll hand it off to Bruno, and he's brought down at midfield. That's going to be Kwame Bell on the stop at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of three on the play. And that will bring up third and nine. So the end around to Fred Bruno is unsuccessful. And Sioux City now met with a third and nine. See what they do here. But 11.55 to go in quarter number three. See what kind of play Coach DeGeorgia draws up. Former Bandit quarterback. Here's Murphy lining up in the shotgun. Two receivers go in motion and Bruno and Iberimi. 
Arnold takes the shotgun snap, drops back, pressure coming, pocket collapsing, dumps a pass off over to the far side. Todd Macon, and Macon is brought down to the 16-yard line. We do have a flag after the play in the backfield. But as of right now, it's a gain of seven to the 16. And we'll see what the penalty is. I believe it's going to be on Sioux City, and it is. And it is going to be holding on the offense. I believe they got Kenny Trevant, the Briar Cliff alum, a six foot five, 390 pound rookie, who gets whistled for the hold. That's going to back him up 10 yards on the play to the 17. And they have to get all the way to the B 14 yard line for the first down. This is going to be a third and 19 for Sioux City. Murphy lines up in the shotgun. Two receivers are going to be set. Ibarimian making go in motion. Dropping back is Murphy. Looks to pass. Pressure coming. He's tripped up, stays on his feet, and finally crawls his way to the 20-yard line. That's a great effort there on the backfield by Antonio Vance, who tripped him up initially on the play. And that this will be a 43-yard, I beg your pardon, a 45-yard field goal attempt. Here's the snap, ball down, the kick is away, end over end, tailing left and no good. Greg Conry's kick is no good. And Omaha will have an opportunity to potentially cut it to a, as close a game as three points on this possession. They could make it 33 to 30. So with the kick going out of bounds, that will set up the beef at their own five yard line. As Emmanuel Yeager, who got cut off the preseason roster by Sioux City, picked up by Omaha, he now maybe has a little bit of revenge built up in him after being dealt away by Sioux City. Playing against uh, the team that initially started him. So here's first and 10 at the beef, ball at the B five yard line. Jaeger lines up in the shotgun with his feet on the goal line, sends his receivers in motion, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself right side to the 10, green to run to the 15 and is upended at the 20 yard line. That's a gain of 15 on the play and it is enough for a B first down. 15-yard carry by Emmanuel Yeager brings up first and 10 for the Beef. As they have to get now into banded territory to get first down yardage. So just like that, the field gets opened up a whole lot more for Omaha. They are trying to cut this from an 11-point game down to much less. It's 33-22, to 22, Sioux City out in front, nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Yeager lines up in the shotgun, sends two receivers in motion far side. He'll take the handoff, hand it off to Bray left side. And Bray takes it to across midfield and is finally brought down at the 20. I believe C.J. Jones on the play, and Jones is slow to get up for the Bandits. That is going to be first down yardage, though, for Omaha, all the way to the Sioux City 20-yard line, and Jones is very slow to get up. I believe there was some... Potential head-to-head -to -head, head -to -head contact there with Jones and Bray. Bray seems none the worse for it with 9.09 to go in the third quarter, and Jones will be helped off the turf into the bench and will be heading back to the Sioux City training facility. So the beef will line up at the Sioux City 20-yard line on first and 10. On their last two plays have combined for 25 yards and two first downs. The beef offense are on a mission right now. Lining up at the Sioux City 20 yard line. Jaeger lines up at the shotgun, feet on midfield, sends two receivers in motion. He'll take the snap, and the ball is loose. A botched handoff, and Jaeger falls on top of it. Peaster falls on top of him, and they exchange a, a nice show of sportsmanship there, each respecting each other's game to this point. That's a loss of four and it'll bring up second and 14. So that could have been catastrophic for this beef possession that's trying to cut into an 11-point lead, which started the half at 19. 8-12 to go in quarter number three. Bandits out in front by 11. 
Jaeger lines up under center, single back formation. Two receivers go in motion. Jaeger takes the snap, pitches it right. Two flags come on the play as Bray is brought down. I believe three different officials saw the play. There's a flag all the way back there, flag behind the line of scrimmage, and a flag right at the line of scrimmage. So three different officials, I think, saw the same penalty. And this might be coming back for Omaha. We will see. Our back judge, Monty Tilgner, saw it. And our umpire, Steve Blocker, was the other to see it. And it is going to be holding on the beef, which is interesting that that's the penalty they came up with because the flags were immediate. There's two fouls. Okay. So we've got a hold on the beef and an illegal formation on the beef. The hold is the penalty accepted for Omaha. I was going to say, there, two of those flags out of the three that came down went out right at the start of the play, and the other one must have been for the hold. So it will be second and very long ball at the beef 16. Jaeger takes a one-step drop, fires a screen pass to Kareem Jones, who takes it up the near boards to the 24-yard line. It's a gain of eight, and we got a flag after the play. Flag after the play, and it's going to be for some extracurriculars. A lot of jawing going on between Sioux City and Omaha. No love lost between these two teams. Let's see what the call is from our head official, Randy Hagedorn. Let's see what they decided to call on this one. It looks like it's going to be on Sioux City. And I believe it will be. All right, beg your pardon, it might not be. We have to wait in question as the officials decide what it is. 7.39 to go in quarter number three. Bandits lead the beef 33-22 to here in the third quarter of action in the home regular season opening. So it's going to be brings up third down and even longer from the beef 12 yard line. If I can do the math, I believe it is a 28 yard fourth down play. So fourth and about 28 by my estimates. And we, what do we have? We're going to kick. So a timeout is called by Omaha as even Emmanuel Jaeger is pumping up the crowd here. The beef quarterback wanted to, the Tyson faithful to make some noise. A timeout's gonna be called by Omaha with 7.39 to go in the third. Bandits lead 33 to 22 over the Omaha beef. We'll take a break and come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenas, Sioux City. Kitchen appliances, this April at Hard Rock with the Kitchen Refresh Giveaway. Play with your Rock Star reward card at your favorite slot machine and qualify to win a new stainless steel microwave, dishwasher, oven, or refrigerator every day in April. Come back on April 29th and 30th for your chance to win a full four-piece kitchen appliance set. Play and win a Kitchen Refresh every day this April only at Hard Rock Casino Sea City. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you here on Fox Sports Radio. 620 KMS, 739 to go in quarter number three. And we've got the previous play under review now as currently this sets as a fourth down and long. And Omaha had their kicking units out to do the field goal attempt, but they're going to review the play on what down it is. So interesting change of events there as Omaha, I believe, is, is challenging the play. Let's take this time to not only drink some water, but also Thank some of our many fine sponsors for bringing you Bandit Indoor Football each and every week, like Three Rivers Transportation, Bootleggers, which 
uh, invites you to a post-game party for Bandit fans following this contest. Absolute Screen Art, Burger King, AC&R, American Home Healthcare, High V, CW Suter Services, Central Bank, Firehouse Subs, Pizza Ranch, R.E. Scott, Security National Bank, Ward Electric Company, Unity Point Health, Wall of Fame, Sioux Gateway Airport, Ultimate Fitness, Texas Roadhouse, Thompson Electric, Sioux City Ford Lincoln, and SCE Partners along with the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. So right now, the scenario as it sits, 7.39 left in quarter number three. The Bandits are out in front of the beef, 33 to 22. And right now, Omaha is challenging the play as to what down it is. Because right now it is a fourth and 28, which meant the kicking unit came out. Ezekiel Ravelo was on the field, ready to do the kicking for Omaha. But now he is back on the bench, actually. He's waiting on the bench to see what the ruling is. Omaha's coaching staff has had many gripes with this officiating crew so far tonight. They've seen them disagree on a lot of uh, plays so far, and they're using their second challenge as well. And we have our officials coming out from under the hood, and it looks like they've got the right down. Let's see. So wait a minute, the previous play was second down and now it is third down. Interesting, don't know how you miss that many downs. Nevertheless, it's third and about 28 from the beef 12 yard line. Jaeger's gonna line up in the shotgun with nobody in the backfield, sends his receivers in motion, takes the snap, drops back, pressure coming, fires a dump pass far side and the pass is complete. Taken up the far boards and shoved into the bench. On the play, so I believe Calvin Phillips, who was hit into the boards and almost sent straight into the bandit bench. That's a gain across midfield of about 15 yards to the 23. Beg your pardon, to the 22, so that's a 16-yard passing catch. Brings up fourth and 12 now for the Beef, who are going to line up for a field goal attempt. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt for Ezekiel Arevalo. The hold will be made by Drew Perhaska, and back deep to return a missed kick will be C.J. Jones. Band of Faithful getting their crowd nice and loud. We got a whistle and a stoppage of play, and it will be a delay of game called on the beef. We'll back him up five yards. That'll make a 37-yard kick turn into a 42-yard kick. And now the beef will reline up and uh, try that again. Coach Marlon Loban trying to get the Tyson Event Center on their feet and making some noise. So the 42-yard field goal attempt. Snap, ball down. The kick is on its way. End over end. It's good. No. It's not good. The kick is not good. And so, Omaha's kick is no good. It looked plain as day good to me. I must have seen it wrong. So 6.15 to go in quarter number three. Bandits lead by 11. Over the beef, and a media timeout is called. We'll take a break, and we'll come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City. Thompson Electric Company is the premier Midwest electrical contractor, providing electrical services for residential and commercial customers since 1933. Thompson Electric is a forward-thinking, innovative leader using the latest technology in every aspect of their business, including arc flash analysis, infrared thermal imaging, and solar energy. For more information, go to ThompsonElectricCompany.com or call 252-4221. Thompson Electric Company is a proud supporter of your Sioux City Bandits. Bandit Indoor Football is on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. 
Welcome back inside the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS says the Sioux City Bandits have yet to score here in the third quarter, but they lead the beef 33 to 22. They thankfully had a 19 point lead heading into the halftime break. A Antonio Bray touchdown is the only score to this point in quarter number three with 6.15 left in the third quarter. It'll be banned at football after the missed field goal attempt by Ezekiel Arevalo. Will give the Bandits the football on offense. Leading by 11 and trying to get their first score of the second half. The previous possession for Sioux City, of course, fruited no points and uh, now are trying to get themselves on the board here in the second half. Want to remind you, the next broadcast of Bandit Indoor Football will be two weeks from now from Amarillo, Texas, as the Bandits will be taking on the Venom at 6 o'clock. That is the kickoff for that one down in Amarillo. That'll be the 20th of April will be the next Bandit football broadcast after this one. Corey Murphy lines up under center, single back formation. Two receivers go in motion on first and 10 for the five. They'll hand it off up the middle to Todd Macon. He's brought down at the 10 yard line finally by a host of beef. The ball comes loose and it's taken by Omaha into the end zone. And they're gonna rule him down by contact. And they're gonna throw the challenge flag on this one for sure. So the beef are adamant that they got the fumble. As of right now, the ball is marked down at the 13. It'll be second and two. And so the, they're gonna review this one for sure. So the fumble by, or questioned fumble by Todd Macon is being reviewed by our officials here at the Tyson Event Center with 5.54 to go in quarter number three. This could be big. It would give the beef the football in bandit territory at the 13 yard, or I beg your pardon. They're, it's gonna be interesting to see how they rule this. I believe they would just rule him down where he recovered the football because technically Kwame Bell did run it into the end zone. But of course, the play had been whistled down so the bandits didn't even attempt to make a stop on the play. But with 5.54 to go in quarter number three, this could be a big, uh, challenge play. We'll see what uh, ends up becoming of the result in this one. As Sioux City trying to hold on to an 11 point lead in there. Well, as of right now, trying to get that first score of the second half, a monkey that's been on their back for the past 10 minutes or so of this contest. 5.54 to go left in quarter number three. It's gonna be interesting. This is gonna be a big play with not a lot of time left in quarter number three and only an 11 point lead for Sioux City. The Bandits want everything they can get and of course the football is for sure one of them. As Im immediately, I can't stress that enough, immediately after the whistles came, the red challenge flag was on the turf here at the Tyson Event Center. They knew immediately that they wanted to challenge that fumble. And now we'll see if that they'll end up keeping that challenge. The officials come out from under the hood and they will see what the call is. From head official Randy Hagedorn. And so it'll be a fumble recovery by Omaha's Kwame Bell. And so the Sioux City offense is sent off the turf. It'll be first and 10 for the beef at, their, at the Bandit 13 yard line. Boy, that is a huge turnover for Omaha. Now the beef with only 14 yards to go till they strike for six points. That's a big, Challenge overturn and a good job by the beef recognizing it. Jaeger lines up in the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, fires a lob ball into the corner for Jones, and he overthrows his intended target. It'll be incomplete as that ball goes out of play, and it will bring up second and ten for the beef. Boy, they wanted it all on that play. 
Jones made a heck of an effort with his right hand trying to make the play, but was just unable to haul it in. Jaeger had a little too much oomph on it as that one sailed into the party zone here at the Tyson Event Center. Here's Jaeger in the shotgun. Two receivers go in motion near side. He takes the snap, makes the handoff, keeps it himself left side. He's wrapped up and brought down by Zach Slugger at the 12-yard line. That's a gain of two on the play. And it'll be third and eight for the Beef at the Bandit 12-yard line. Well, if you're the Beef, you got to get a score on this possession for sure. You got to capitalize on these points off of turnovers. And so the Beef will be met with a third and eight on the contest. The Beef have uh, not fared well on third down efficiency. One of six so far on offense. Jaeger lines up under center with a single back formation. He takes the snap, pitches it left break, cuts over the middle, and he's tripped up by Ben Peaster at the 10-yard line. That's a gain of two, and it brings up four down and six for the beef. What a play by Ben Peaster, tripping up Bray by his shoelaces. 3.50 to go in corner number three. Bandits lead the beef by 11. 33 to 22. As the bandit or the beef are gonna go for it. They're one for two on fourth down conversions to this point, and they are going to go for it in the bandit red zone. Fourth and five at the bandit nine yard line. You can hear the move as Ale is making a lot of noise, trying to get behind their bandits and a stoppage of play. We have a timeout, and I believe we do. I'm out, I believe, will be called by Omaha. And if it is, they'll have one timeout left. And it will be. And Omaha timeout with 3.27 left to go in quarter number three. The Bandits lead the beef 33 to 22. There's one timeout left for Omaha. As they try to score here in the beef. We're 1-0 after a victory over Oklahoma, 59 to 55. And are now trying to beat Sioux City. So it'll be a fourth and five when we come out of the timeout inside the red zone at the Bandit nine yard line. So here come the beef. It'll be actually now they'll do a field goal attempt. So this will be a 24 yard field goal attempt for Ezekiel Larevalo. Here's the snap. Hold by Prohaska. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Ezekiel Larevalo gets three points on the field goal and makes it 33 to 25 in favor of the Bandits. 3:25 to go in quarter number three, and it's back to a one-possession game. Boy, this is shaping up to be a good one. The Beef have put up 11 unanswered points on Sioux City to start the second half and trail the Bandits by 8, 33 to 25. The Bandits will come back on offense as they have 111 yards of total offense to this point. They're averaging three and a half yards per play offensively compared to the Bandits who have brought their total up significantly to 104 total yards of offense and Omaha now within striking distance of the Bandits for the first time since the early going of the second quarter when it was back to 1914. That's the closest in a while that this uh, contest has been. 325 to go in quarter number three. And it's out in front of the Beef, 33 to 25. As the Beef will be doing the kicking off duties. And Fred Bruno, Dorian Coward, the usual suspects back there to do the returning. Sioux City needs a heck of an offensive possession here. They are almost going to be heading into the fourth quarter without scoring in the third. Just doesn't happen if you're Sioux City. Got to get an offensive possession here. Arevalo will send a high end over end kick. Almost scrapes the, the Raptors here with a Tyson. Bruno takes it out of the end zone to the 10, near side to the 15, 20. Cuts up to the middle, and he's across midfield to the 24-yard line. Fred Bruno with a 26-yard kickoff return. 
And that brings up first and 10 for Sioux City at the beef 24 yard line. Fred Bruno is a little shaken up on the play. That is not good for Sioux City. Fred Bruno heads to the bench with some kind of issue that he is dealing with. And so it'll be the Bandits lining up at the beef 24 yard line without their nine year pro Fred Bruno. He's sitting on the bench right now. Corey Murphy will line up under center and we're gonna get a timeout actually. Corey Murphy had a bit of miscommunication with offensive coordinator Jared DiGiorgio. And with 2.41 to go in the third, Bandits lead the beef 33 to 25. So Bandits have two timeouts remaining. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS, Sioux City. Dressing about doggy accidents on your carpets is a thing of the past with LifeGuard waterproof backing from shop doors at Novus Carpets. The patented LifeGuard backing system repels gold so they don't soak through to create odor-causing stains that are hard to remove. If you have pets and kids, be confident your home is clean and fresh with LifeGuard carpets from shop floors at Novus Carpets. Visit Novus Carpets today, Glen Avenue, Sioux City, and online at noviscarpets.com. Novus Carpets. First and 10 for the Bandits. Murphy takes the under center snap, hands it off up the middle to Todd Macon, and he gets five yards to the 19. It'll be second and five for Sioux City at the Beef 19 yard line. Daniel Versteg bringing you the play by play of this contest here between the Bandits and the Beef right here on 620 Cam and S. 222 to go in quarter number three, and the Bandits lead Omaha by the score of 33 to 25. It'll be second and five. For the beef on off, or bandits, excuse me, on offense at the beef 19 yard line. Single back formation as Murphy takes the snap, drops back three steps, looks to throw, pressure's coming, pocket is collapsed beyond belief, and he gets rid of it, spikes it in front of Todd, make it incomplete. And that brings up third down and five to go. Third down and five for the Bandits at the Beef 19 yard line as our head official ran over to the Beef sideline and gave an earful to one of the assistants for Omaha. Again, Omaha's had a lot of issues with the officials. They've challenged this officiating crew three times and Sioux City has challenged them none. Here's third and five. Murphy lines up in the shotgun, takes the snap, doesn't even step back, fires left side, pass complete to Ibarimi at the 12 yard line, and he's got enough for the first down. Sioux City first down, seven yards on the play to the 12 of the beef, and Sioux City is threatening to score here to end the third quarter with a minute 02 to go in quarter number three. And it's a line up at the beef 12 yard line. Sioux City breaks the huddle. Corey Murphy leads his team to the line of scrimmage. You're on first and 10 at the Beef 12 yard line. They'll stack the backfield with three running backs. Murphy takes the snap, hands it off to Virgis, and Virgis gets to the 10, seven yard line as the pile got pushed all the way to the seven. And it is a five yard carry. And it brings up second and five for the Bandits inside the red zone now of the Beef. So ball is at the Omaha seven yard line. And Sioux City is going to elect to run out the third quarter clock. So we will head to the fourth quarter with our score. Sioux City 33 and Omaha 25 as clock runs down. Third quarter comes to an end. 15 minutes will be left to determine if Sioux City goes one and one or 0 oh and two to start off their Champions Indoor Football 2019 season. We'll take a break and we'll come back with the fourth quarter in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS, Sioux City. At Hartman Chiropractic. 
you'll find that doctors who really care is so much more than just a slogan. That's because, along with five doctors of chiropractic care, the entire staff is dedicated to the alleviation of pain. Heartland Chiropractic at 711 Two Point Road in Dakota Dune and 3403 Stinging Hills Boulevard. Look for them in the white and yellow pages of your phone book. Welcome back inside the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS and iHeartRadio and video streaming online courtesy of Pluto TV. The Bandits lead the beef 33 to 25. Omaha put up 11 points in that third quarter. Sioux City put up nine and are threatening to score here to start the fourth quarter of action as the Bandits are lining up at the Beef 7-yard line, it'll be second and five for Sioux City coming out of their own timeout, or excuse me, to end the third quarter. So 15 minutes left to the fourth quarter clock, second and five with a stacked backfield. Three running backs, they'll take the snap, hand it off to Virgis, up the middle, across the five, barrels his way through and into the end zone. Touchdown, Sioux City! And the former Bandit, former Memphis Express, is into the end zone as a bandit for the first time this year. And Sioux City gets the touchdown they need. And they lead Omaha 39 to 25. Boy, Darrell Burgess with his eighth career touchdown in a bandit uniform. And he puts the bandits up in a very crucial spot as Greg Connery comes out to attempt the point after kick. With 14.55 to go in quarter number th four. Snap ball down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Sioux City is up on Omaha, 40 to 25, and the early going of the fourth quarter. We'll take another break, and we'll come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. We're evolving our look. But there are a few things we won't change. We built on a set of time tested principles. Integrity, honor, fight, vision, good humor, fact, duty, connection. They matter to us. They matter to us. Something just Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center here in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS and iHeartRadio. Video streaming on Pluto TV. The Bandits just scored a touchdown over the beef and lead Omaha 40 to 25. And Sioux City's kick is going to be fielded by Drew Prohaska at the 13. Takes it up middle of the field to the 24. Yeah, still in Omaha territory right by midfield. And it'll be first and 10 for the beef off of that kickoff return by the former Bandit, Drew Prohaska. So the Beef look to answer the call by Sioux City's offense after scoring a touchdown in that first play of the fourth quarter to put the Bandits up by 15. It's 40 to 25. Sioux City with the advantage, trying to pick up win number one on this early season contest. It'll be Emmanuel Yeager lining up under center, single back formation, two receivers go in motion. He takes the snap, pitches it left for Bray, takes it up the middle of the turf to the 19 yard line. That is a gain of seven on the play. And it brings up second and three. But the beef are now in bandit territory at the 19 yard line with 14 minutes exactly left in quarter number four. Beef line up at the bandit 19 yard line. They gotta get across the 16 for the first down. 
Here is Corey, or excuse me, Emmanuel Yeager. He lines up in the shotgun, sets two receivers in motion, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and now dumps it off to Prohaska right side, and he is lit up on the play by Sioux City's Kenneth Maxwell. That's going to be just shy of the first down. And there's a flag on the play as well, I do believe. What do we got for a call? Let's see what happens. Right now it'll be third and inches for the beef. And it is a legal formation on Omaha. I believe they got Drew Prohaska because he stutter stepped a little bit on his motion. And uh, that's uh, gonna cost you if you're Omaha. So 13.37 to go in quarter number four. Bandits lead the beef by 15, 40 to 25. As the beef line up at the Bandit 24 yard line. Jaeger takes the snap, hands it off to Bray up the middle and Bray is brought down by Ben Peaster and Zach Slugger at the 23 yard line. That'll bring up third down and eight to go for the beef. So the beef now with a third and long at the 23 yard line. But 13.05 to go in quarter number four. It'll be third and eight as Jaeger lines up in the shotgun, sends two receivers in motion. The snap is bobbled and fielded on the play by Bray. Takes it up far more to the 15 20, cuts up the middle to the six. And a broken play again by Omaha is saved by Antonio Bray. And that will be down to the six. It brings up first and goal for the beef. So first and goal inside the Sioux City red zone at the six with 12.23 to go in quarter number four. 40 to 25 is our score in favor of Sioux City. As Jaeger lines up under center, single back formation, pitches it right, Bray, and he's into the end zone. Seemingly untouched as Omaha scores, Antonio Bray in for six on the beef, cut it to a 40 to 31 game on the third rushing touchdown of the evening for Antonio Bray. Antonio Bray with three rushing touchdowns and a kickoff return touchdown for Omaha. Doing it all offensively and special teams wise. He had four rushing touchdowns for the beef last week against, or two weeks ago against Oklahoma. Here's the snap, ball down, kick is away from a Ravel and it is good. Omaha has cut it back to an eight point game. 12.07 to go in quarter number four. Sioux City leads by eight over Omaha. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Car and Driver Magazine every year awards their 10 best. And the best compact SUV award went to the Mazda CX-5. Again, with over a dozen competitive products in that segment, the CX-5 is considered the best. In addition, in the midsize SUV segment, the Mazda CX-9 came out on top. CX-9, multiple year award winner. You need to check them out. You'll be impressed and pleasantly surprised, Jensen Mazda. How can I be so sure? Because I'm Jensen. Thanks, folks. Bandit Indoor Football is on. Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. 12.07 to go in regulation as the Sioux City Band. It's leading the Omaha B 40-32. As after Antonio Bray rushed for his third touchdown of the contest, seventh on the season. He also has a kickoff return for a touchdown. So you can credit Antonio Bray for 24 of the 32 points for the beef. The other five can come, or five at least, six at least I should say, can come from Zeke Arevalo and two can come from Drew Prohaska, but the other 24 come solely from Antonio Bray. He has made an effort. If Omaha wins this, you have to get him some kind of weekly honor in the Champions Indoor Football Awards every week. He's got to get the Offensive Player of the Week if Omaha is able to pull off a victory here. 
12 7 to go in quarter number four. Bandits lay the B 40 to 32. And it'll be Bandit football off of this kickoff. Back deep to return. It's going to be Daryl Virgis along with Dorian Cowart. Here is a low knuckleballing kick. Takes a weird spin. Bounces in front of Virgis. He has trouble fielding it and takes it out of the back of the end zone. Across to the far sideline 10 and into the boards at the 12 yard line. Flag on the play afterwards. We got extracurriculars between Calvin Phillips and Kenny Maxwell for Sioux City. And I believe they're going to get Omaha again for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. <laughs> Kenny Maxwell just got a big high five from Marlon Loban for seemingly drawing the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So we'll see what the flag for sure is. I, I can almost bet you that it'll be Calvin Phillips whistled for unsportsmanlike conduct. I believe there's a second penalty, though, separately on the play. So this could be two penalties. There are. So we got block of the back on Sioux City. And the unsportsmanlike conduct called on Omaha. So the result of the first play as it goes back half the distance to the goal. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Bandits. And somehow, okay, I was about to say, they are good. so they backed it up half the distance and then gave the Bandits the 15 yards to the 18-yard line. So it'll be Bandit football at their own 18. First and 10 with 11 up, 55 to go in the fourth quarter. Bandits up by eight. Over the beef, Corey Murphy lines up under center. Three men in the backfield with Ibarimi, the lone receiver near side. They'll hand it off to make it up the middle. Stutter steps and takes his time up to the 24-yard line. That's a gain of six on the play. And it brings up second and four for Sioux City at their own 24-yard line. And it's trying to work their way offensively at the 24 yard line, make it a, or keep it at least a two possession game and, and keep the beef at arm's distance for as much as they can. A beef stop would be huge for Omaha in this possession. Murphy again lines up with that three triangle backfield with running backs. They'll take the snap and hand off to Cowart this time across midfield to the 24 and he will get forward progress ruled at the 24 of Omaha. So that's a gain of two across midfield. It will now bring up third down and two to go for the Bandits. Got to get across the beef 22 yard line. So it's third and two for Sioux City at the beef 24 yard line. 1040 to go in quarter number four. Bandits lead the beef by eight, 40 to 32. Three men in the backfield again for Corey Murphy under center. He takes the snap, hands it off to Macon. Macon right side, he's brought down to the 22. That's gonna be very close, but I believe it's gonna be enough for the first down. If not, it'll be a fourth and very inches. They are going to say that's fourth down. My goodness, that is very close. They are right next to each other. Both the down marker and the line of scrimmage marker are touching at this point, leaned up against the boards. But now our officials are actually going to be talking over the ball placement. And check to make sure that that is actually the correct placement. And they're going to move the chains. It's going to be first down. So the chains will be moved. They initially marked it as fourth and inches. But now... They're going to move the chains, and the defensive coordinator for Omaha, and Marvin Jones is laughing at the officials, it seems like. So it is first down for Sioux City. Ball at the Omaha 22-yard line. So the Bandits somehow get the first down on that play. Omaha's coaching staff not in agreement with the call. Another three 
running back backfield. They got the beef to jump off sides. No call. Hand off to make it up the middle. He's brought down at the 17-yard line. It's a gain of five. And that brings up second down and five to go. For the beat, for the Bandits with 9.43 to go in quarter number four. Bandits leading the beef 40 to 32. Bandits trying to secure their first win of the season over their I-29 rivals. It'll be second and five at the Beef 17-yard line. Sioux City lines up, Murphy under center, three running backs in the backfield. They'll take the snap, hand it off to Cowart, left side. Ball is loose, and Cowart lucky to fall on top of that one at the 16-yard line. Cowart recovers his own fumble. That's a gain of one on the play, and it brings up third down and four. So a gain of one on a... Almost disastrous play for Sioux City. Brings up now third and four for the Bandits. In beef territory at the 16-yard line. Here is Sioux City. Again, three running backs in the backfield. Macon is the up back and split backs with Cohort and Virgis. They'll hand it off to Virgis. Left side cuts across the middle to the 12, and he is tripped up and wrapped up. Brought down at the 11, that's a five yard carry and good enough to move the chains once again. It's a bandit first down. So first and 10 for Sioux City at the beef 11 yard line, pounding on the door of the red zone. Here with 8.20 to go in the fourth quarter, Bandits trying to make this a two possession game against the beef. It'll be first and 10 from the Omaha 11 as Sioux City trying to Get that crucial two possession lead as time continues to wind down. Eight minutes left, three men in the backfield. Murphy under center, hands it off Burgess, left side across the 10, down at the five. That's a gain of about six on the play. And it will bring up second down and a five actually. And they're gonna mark him at the six. So it's second and five at the beef six, but now Sioux City Back in the red zone once again. Sioux City has had a lot of success in the red zone in this contest. At the half, we're four for four on red zone tries. They're now four for five. Here's the handoff left side. Burgess around the outside, breaks a tackle, still on his feet to the three. He is very close, and that brings up third down and two for Sioux City at the beef three-yard line. 7.09 to go in quarter number four. Bandits lead the beef by eight as Sioux City needs the score. I, I don't like using the word needs, but they need a score here to keep the beef at arm's length. Here's third and two. Ball at the beef three yard line. Three men in the backfield again for Corey Murphy as he lines up under center. Takes the snap, hands it off Macon, right side. He's brought down right back at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one to the two and a half, maybe. And no, they're gonna mark him right back at the line of scrimmage. That brings up fourth and two and they are going to kick. Greg Conry comes out for the field goal attempt. And so Sioux City's gonna settle for three. The kick here would make it an 11 point game in favor of the Bandits. So 6-10 to go in quarter number four. This will be an 18 yard field goal attempt for Greg Conry. Murphy on to hold. Here's the snap, ball down, kick is up, kick is good. Sioux City with the field goal from 18 yards out and the Bandits lead by 11, 43 to 32 over the Omaha Beef. 5.59 to go in quarter number four. We'll take a break and we will come back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Feeling when you pull up to a family get together? Look who's here. You grab a nice cold beer and they fix you a plate of your favorites? Well, that's the same feeling I get at Texas Roadhouse. They're famous for their fresh hand cut steaks, fall off the bone ribs, made from scratch sides in a fun family like atmosphere. In fact, I tell the folks that the only difference between coming home and going out to Texas Roadhouse is they don't make you clean up and do the dishes. Come on, come join the family at Texas Roadhouse. You're listening to Bantic Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. 
Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. Daniel Versteg once again with you as the Bandits lead the B 43 to 32. 5.59 to go in quarter number four. Greg Connery on to do the kickoff duties and back deep to return is the dangerous Antonio Bray. He already has a 50 yard kickoff return for six. And that would be the last of the things that Sioux City wants to happen. Connery will send a low line drive kick, bouncing at the 10 and bouncing into the end zone and out of play. As Antonio Bray actually wanted to return that kickoff, but a kid in the party zone snatched it out of his hands before he could. And so that should bring the ball out to the five yard line, but could make a rule for Band interference potentially. Our official's gonna come over the loudspeaker. Will be first down at the five yard line, so it's just gonna be a regular kickoff out of bounds. And that little kid uh, did a good job on his own of keeping Antonio Bray from returning a kickoff. Sioux City doesn't even wanna uh, attempt that really, I don't think. And the, the kid made it so that Sioux City didn't have to find out what happened. So here's first and 10 at the five for the beef. Jaeger lines up in the shotgun, fakes the throw, keeps it himself right side and trying to juke Oscar Opera on the play, but Opera makes the stop at the nine yard line. That's a four yard carry for Jaeger. And it brings up second down and six for the beef at their own nine yard line. It's crunch time for Omaha. Trailing by 11 to Sioux City, 43 to 32, 5.15 to go in quarter number four. Jaeger will line up under center, single back formation. Two receivers near side go in motion. They'll take the snap, pitch it left side. Bray, he cuts from the far, near to the far and across the 20. He's tripped up at the 20 yard line. We got extracurriculars after the play. I'm actually shocked Oscar Opara did not get and unsportsmanlike conduct, he pushed Kareem Jones after the play. Nevertheless, that is a carry of about 11 yards, and it's good enough for a B first down. Again, Antonio Bray doing everything possible offensively. He has 110 rushing yards for the beef after having a cool 99 against Oklahoma. Here's the handoff to Prohaska on an end around. He's across midfield to the 20. First down beef as he's still on his feet. Opera finally pushes him backwards enough for forward progress. And the beef are big time threatening to score on Sioux City. That's a 13 yard carry from the former bandit Drew Prohaska. And it brings up first and 10 for the beef at the Sioux City 17 yard line. Well, the bandit defense has got to make a stand here. Rushing yards for the Beef have eclipsed 136. Here's a single back formation. They'll pitch it right for Bray, and he is stuck in the backfield. Ben Peaster on the stop in the backfield at the 19-yard line. That's a loss of two, and it brings up second and 12 for Omaha. And so the Beef. But 3.35 to go in quarter number four. Trail Sioux City 43 to 32 on second down and 12 to go. Beef with one timeout left. Sioux City with two. Let's hope Sioux City doesn't have a reason to use it. Here's second and 12 for the Beef. Lining up in a single back formation. Jaeger lines up under center, takes the snap, fakes the handoff one way, almost trips and falls in the backfield and is brought down right Back, a loss of two on the play. Kenny Maxwell on the stop for Sioux City and it brings up third and 14. It's a big stop in the backfield. Jaeger was tripped up coming around on a QB fake handoff keeper around the near side. And so it's third and 14. Ball at the Sioux City 21 yard line as the bandit bench trying to make the Tyson Event Center get on their feet and make some noise. 
Here come the beef. They line up at the Sioux City 21-yard line on third and 14. Five seconds on the play clock. They'll send the receivers in motion. Jaeger drops back, looks for it all in the end zone, and it is incomplete in the back of the end zone. Oscar Apera with the tip over the boards. And he comes up slowly on the play. The incompletion brings up fourth down and 14 for Omaha with 2.09 to go in quarter number four. I think the beef will have to go for it here. Ezekiel Arevalo is not even being summoned at this point. We got actually a timeout called by the beef. With a minute 56 to go in quarter number four, Sioux City trying to hang on to an 11 point lead over the beef, 43 to 32. And we will take a break. We'll come back in 30 seconds. Beef will have a fourth and long when we come back to the Tyson Event Center. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Are you looking for a new career with a great environment, competitive pay, and excellent benefits package? Join our team at Seaboard Triumph Foods. There's plenty of room and opportunity to advance if you put in the work and the effort. Join us this Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for on-site interviews for production associates. We are located at 5555 Seaboard Triumph Parkway in Sioux City or apply at SiouxCityPort.com. Bandit Indoor Football is on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Welcome back to the Tyson Event Center in downtown Sioux City. Daniel Versteg with you. Fourth and 14 for the beef at the Sioux City 21-yard line here under two minutes. Omaha trails by 11 to Sioux City. Jaeger takes the shotgun snap, drops back, pressure coming. He's sacked by Ben Peaster. Turnover on downs, and it's Sioux City football on the Ben Peaster sack. Ben Peaster with the sack in the backfield. It's a loss of two. And it's looking like Sioux City will come away with their first victory of the season. 145 left in regulation. Separating the Bandits from their first victory. It's 43 to 32. Sioux City out in front. Murphy will line up under center. Three men in the backfield. Again, the rule is Sioux City has to gain forward yardage. They'll take the snap, hand it off right side. Macon, he gets forward yardage to the 23 yard line. It's a gain of one. And that brings up second and nine for Sioux City. So it'll be second and nine for the Bandits at their own 23-yard line. Sioux City is going to waste as much time as they can. The clock ticks under one minute to play. Sioux City is going to have their first victory. We're actually going to have a media timeout at this point, so... Stoppage of play here with one minute left to go in regulation. We'll take this time to thank some of our sponsors for bringing you Bandit Indoor Football all season long. Thanks sponsors like Three Rivers Transportation, Absolute Screen Art, Bootleggers, which will have a post-game party, and it should be very raucous uh, after this victory. ACNR, American Home Health Care, Burger King, Firehouse Subs, CW Suitor Services, High V. Central Bank, Pizza Ranch, R.E. Scott, Sioux Gateway Airport, Ward Electric Company, Security National Bank, Wall of Fame, Ultimate Fitness, Unity Point Health, Thompson Electric, Sioux City Ford Lincoln, Texas Roadhouse, SE Partners, and at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. So with a minute left, the Bandits out in front of the B, 43-32. Take a look at some other scores from around Champions Indoor Football this evening. Right now, Texas has beaten Salina 67 to 60. That game a final. Texas has beaten the Salina Liberty. Texas is 2 and 0, and Salina starts off the season 1 and 2, as they have put up 57 points in a loss, 65 in a win and 60 in a loss. Boy, Salina cannot uh, catch a break when it comes to these games. They are one and two to start the season. 
Wichita and Oklahoma also in progress. Don't have any live scoring, unfortunately, for that one. So we will have to get you up to date on that one. As it is Wichita leading Oklahoma 27 to 26 at the end of three quarters of play. So Wichita is trying to look for win number one along with Oklahoma. So a minute left here in regulation as Sioux City leads the beef 43 to 32. Ball's gonna be spotted at their own 23 here on second and nine. Murphy lines up under center with three men in the backfield. One receiver near side to Niberini. He takes the snap, hands it off left side. Burgess, he steps back and is brought down. Ball's on the turf. It's recovered by the beef. Omaha recovers the fumble, but we got a flag on the play. And if this is on the beef, that is gonna be costly. I believe, though, it's on Sioux City. Coach Strobing is not happy with Daryl Virgis. Fumble on the play, flag also on the play, beef recover. Hold everything. The fat lady is getting her vocal cords ready, but is yet to sing. So neither coach is very happy right now. So that doesn't give us any indication on what the penalty flag is. Gonna have to await the official call on this one. Coach Strobing coming out to check what it is. And we're still not getting a word with 55 seconds left in the fourth. Bandits up by 11. This is a big play for the beef. So that could cut it to a one possession game. Let's see what the call is. And it is a legal defense on the beef. It's a five yard penalty. Clock will start on the snap as well as the Bandits get into beef territory at the 22-yard line. It'll be second down and four to go for the Bandits at the beef 22. 55 seconds, the clock has to start on the snap as Murphy will line up under center. Three men in the backfield. Takes the snap and hands it off to Macon, and Macon is wrapped up in the backfield at the 24-yard line by Kwame Bell. Kwame Bell with the stop. And that also stops the clock with 50 and a half seconds left to play. It's third down and six left to, to go. Of course, the Bandits did not get forward progress, and so the clock stops because of that. It's third down for the Bandits. Ball at the beef 24-yard line. This game's not quite over, folks. 11-point lead for the Bandits. A lot of Bandit fans left this building happy to make sure they get the victory first. Murphy fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, left side on a QB bootleg. He's brought down to the 18-yard line near the boards, but there is a flag on the play. Flag is thrown about where Murphy ended up being brought down at the 18. So it's a gain of six. That would be first down yardage. But it was, the flag was thrown by our head ref, Randy Hagedorn. So let's see what kind of a call we got here. And it's holding on Sioux City. So the Bandits still cannot catch a break. Clock will start on the snap on this situation as well. That'll be third and 10 plus. That'll be about third and 16 if I did my math correctly. It'll be ball at the Sioux City 16 yard line. 45 and a half seconds left to play in the fourth. Bandits up by 11. Third and 16 for Sioux City as Murphy barks commands at his running backs in the backfield. He sends two of them in motion. They'll pitch it right side for Macon. Macon with a block up ahead to the 19 and a flag again in the backfield. We got all kinds of laundry being thrown to the turf. That's a gain of four for Macon to the 20. And we'll see what the flag ends up being. And it's a legal formation on Sioux City. They're going to replay third down. It's a loss of five to the 11. And so that backs them up even more. This will be a third and 21 for Sioux City with 40.8 seconds left in regulation. Bandits up by 11 over the Beef. Trying to hang on here in the winding seconds. The Beef just can't get the football. If they could get this scenario with the football, it would be 
definitely in business trying to come back. So here's Sioux City, three runners in the backfield. Murphy under center at the 11-yard line, takes the snap and keeps it himself across the middle. And again, a flag on the play. Three straight football plays that ended up with flags. It's a two-yard carry by Murphy to the 13. And this time, I think it's on the beef. Well, he can't guarantee anything. The Bandits are pointing at Omaha. Beg your pardon, they're pointing at Omaha. And it's illegal defense on the beef. So Omaha whistled for the illegal defense. The clock will start on the officials ready this time. It's a five yard penalty to 16. That will bring up third down and 16 for the Bandits, so 35 seconds. The clock can finally tick away. They can tick it down to about 13 seconds left to play if they elect to do so. so. Murphy will line up under center. Three men in the backfield, 24 seconds away from the Bandits' first victory of the season. Murphy's gonna tick it as far as he can and keep it himself. It's a yard carry to the 17, and that should do it. Clock will run out. Sioux City is going to get their first victory of the season, 43 to 32 over their I-29 rivals, the Omaha Beef. A much needed victory for Sioux City, who now jumps into a tie for first place in the Northern Conference with Omaha here to start this regular season outright. Sioux City with a victory, 43-32 over the Beef. They start out their season undefeated here in the Tyson Event Center, 43-32, the final over the Omaha Beef. Both teams now move to one and one on the season. As like I mentioned, Sioux City and Omaha will now jump to a tie for first with Salina in third at one and two after losing today to Texas and Wichita. Trying to hang on to Oklahoma, trying to pick up their first victory of the season. They're currently sitting in the fourth place. Let's take a break, and we'll come back in three minutes to wrap this contest up from the Tyson Event Center. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. Great news! Northwest Bank has a new loan special to help you achieve those items on your wish list. Take that dream vacation or get a jump start on your spring project. Northwest Bank's home equity line of credit special rate of 3.25% APR fixed for six months, then variable rate thereafter, currently 3.75% APR. This rate is available for a limited time to qualified buyers. Stop in or call 1-800-678-4105 for details about credit costs and terms. Visit online at bank-northwest.com. Things just go right when you have the perfect tan from Sun Tan City, like getting asked out by the lead singer of your favorite band. Your tanning experience will go right too, thanks to the experts at Sun Tan City. They really get to know you and recommend the right sunbed or spray tan for your skin type and tanning goals. Because when the perfect tan gives you that inner glow, life's a little shinier. So what does a good time sound like? Does it pack a punch? This is for the UFC light heavyweight belt. Here we go! Or is it off the grid? Four days, three nights, and absolutely no email. Ah, oh, here we go.